praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and worship Him. Let's lift our hands and bless Him because He is faithful. Lord, we thank You. You are worthy of praise. You are the doer of signs and wonders. Lord, we return thanks for the mighty things that you do in our midst. We say thank you. For the healings, for the miracles, we say thank you. For the signs, for the wonders, we say thank you. For the liftings, for the transformations, for the restorations, we say thank you. Glory be to your name. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's hold hands together and just pray in the spirit in one minute that the spirit of revelation will be mighty upon us even as we hear what the Lord has for us tonight. Go ahead and pray. Praise the in other tongues. You are preparing your spirit to receive the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. You are our God and we believe in you. We believe in your ability. We believe in your power. We believe in your wisdom. You are a mighty God and we are believers. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, you were sent to us as the spirit of wisdom, as the spirit of revelation. We're gathered here tonight because we're passionate about knowing you and understanding your ways, accessing your power and walking in dominion we ask you tonight that you open our minds open our spirits open our eyes give us capacity to comprehend to understand the secrets of the kingdom we have come again oh god we declare that except you teach us we cannot understand except you open up our minds we cannot comprehend so we cry dear spirit of the living god that you prevail over us until the word of God becomes spirit and life. And I pray that the grace to manifest the realities of this truth. That that grace also be supplied us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. You know, I never, I never get I never stop getting humbled by the kinds of miracles and the mighty things that we hear every time we're gathered here I want to encourage us to not get used to these things you know there's a way you can get 
so familiar oh is the healing again oh is the breakthrough again your heart must always be in a posture where you receive every miracle no matter how great no matter how little with gratitude in your heart if it could not be done by man then he deserves the glory for it are we together if it could not be done by man then he deserves the glory for it lord jesus we thank you hallelujah tonight i'm going to be teaching but i really believe that um, i know we have a miracle service coming but i i just sense that as i teach tonight there will be a grace to lift burdens from people not just a grace for healing i sense this right from home that as the word of god comes all of a sudden just in the silence you're seated inside or outside or following online you find out that a grace comes upon you prevails over you and all of a sudden a burden is lifted faith is stirred up within you you find out that one infirmity just roaming around your body just leaves just like that listen let me tell you something john chapter 11 and verse 40 said jesus was speaking he said did i not say unto you that if you believe you will see the glory of god there is a relationship between your experience of the glory and your believing god did i not say unto you that if you believe you will see the glory if you believe if you sit down doubting wondering oh can god touch me look the the we learn from scripture that there is nothing that is new under the sun it's true are we together people have been oppressed and the lord took them out of that oppression people have been challenged and the lord took them out of it your assignment is not only to listen but to listen in faith to listen in hope expecting Acts chapter 4 when you read the Bible says the man looked at them expecting to receive something you can look casually just hoping that the service will run and finish but again your heart can be opened I really believe I'm a firm believer that every experience if God is there something must happen to you I'm not necessarily talking about falling down and manifesting physically but you should leave who will not want to attend this service where you are sure you will not be the same nobody wants to attend the service and after the grace there literally is nothing you should know that you have been visited his wisdom comes his power comes his authority comes faith is built your conviction is strengthened these are characteristics of the presence of god i believe that this is what the lord will do in the name of jesus christ amen where's binga please play play me um the strings the anointing is on him tonight you guys just follow him closely but um i just lay down to sleep a little and then i saw him playing the string so i knew that um just just play minor keys for me and let's trust god to do great things tonight lord we bless you one of the all over the world this is this is the period of easter and generally speaking once it is easter period across the christian community pastors usually narrow their teachings around redemption around the cross um, every man of god attempts to help the people or remind them once again of the significance of the cross the significance of the death of jesus his passion and everything revolving around it and um as i meditated upon the things that i'll be sharing tonight i i just felt very strongly stirred in my heart that the lord would want me to teach rather on um, issues that relate to taking advantage um, validating the death of jesus his resurrection using our lives you see as a leader i have had the privilege of blessing people teaching them truth and all of that 
my greatest joy is to see the word produced in your own life so i can imagine that the joy that is in the heart of the father is not just that we keep commemorating periods like this but that we walk in the experience of what that death was meant for are we together now when the father looks from the throne and sees people dying of lassa fever dying being buffeted by satan it doesn't matter what discussion about easter we make it's a mockery hallelujah the experience of the victory of christ is what gives um consolation to the heart of the father especially at periods like this so i just thought to share something with us tonight that i believe will bless us open your heart and um let's see what the lord will guide us to understand first corinthians chapter 2 thank you jesus let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the First Corinthians chapter 2 if we can read it it's a long reading but let's use amplified Paul began to teach something very powerful and I want us to look very closely verse 1 it says as for myself brethren when i came to you were using amplified i did not come proclaiming to you the testimony and evidence or mystery and secret of god concerning what he has done through christ for the salvation of men in lofty words or human philosophy and wisdom there are 16 verses we are reading everything for i resolved to know nothing to be acquainted with nothing to make display of the knowledge of nothing you know among you except jesus christ and him crucified now paul begins by saying look when i came my goal was to present to you christ crucified and then to buttress on the significance of what that should mean to your life so he said i have many things what he's trying to say here is that look i'm a pharisee i'm not dull there are many other things I can tell you, but I have limited the scope of my communication to you to reveal Christ and him crucified. I could tell you about all that things, but when I came to you, I have an option to teach you other things. But for some reason, my goal is to be able to present to you Christ crucified and then to be able to help you understand the full import, the gravity of what his crucifixion can bring are you understanding what he's saying here now and so he's saying and i was you know fear trembling and so on and so forth verse four sorry amplified opens it up so i will jump some things now verse four says and my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive enticing and plausible words of wisdom but they were in the demonstration of the holy spirit and power now don't miss the context the context is christ crucified he says the theme of my communication is christ crucified so every other thing 
that follows from this explanation is predicated upon that foundation christ when i came to you my message started with christ crucified so every other thing that i'm going to reveal to you is connected to this foundation of christ crucified are we following now so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men human philosophy but in the power of god verse 6 it says yet when we were among the full grown you know king james says that we speak this wisdom give us give us king james and then we'll run to amplify it to see verse 6 we'll, we'll just play around with it it says how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature now so look at his progression the apostle starts by saying look ladies and gentlemen when i came to you i had an option to begin to teach you other things to teach you the 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 to display the fruits of my intelligence i'm a pharisee i'm a doctor of the law i'm a learned colleague but i chose to limit myself to present to you christ crucified and then he begins to say that i have done this because i don't want you to just brag about intelligence i want your life to be limited to this reality alongside the blessings that come from it are we together now then he is now switching and saying look that we speak wisdom so he has moved to the subject of wisdom now christ crucified and then wisdom yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught verse 7 it says but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery now look very carefully don't assume you understand what he's saying we speak the wisdom of god but is communicated in a mystery christ crucified the foundation of my teaching when i came to you i came to teach you something about easter but i'm more concerned i have other options but i have noticed a lapse in your life and there is a dimension i want you to come into at is tied to the revelation of christ crucified alongside the benefits that comes from it and then he says that we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery then he says even the hidden wisdom let's see what amplified says about it seven amplified but rather what we are setting forth is the wisdom of god once hidden from the human understanding and now revealed to us by god it says that wisdom which god devised and decreed before the ages for our glory amplified says our glorification let's go back to king james so the bible says seven please and king james i'm, I'm explaining something just walk with me media verse 7 and king james but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery listen carefully it says which god ordained for our what so christ crucified we see the cross there is a revelation from there and part of the benefits that come from there is an ability of the spirit to access what the bible calls the hidden wisdom and it says whoever can access this that god preserved it that it is this formula that will be responsible for the glorification of the saints that this hidden wisdom whatever it is has a part to play in our revealing the glory of god that god himself ordained it before the foundations of the world for our glory verse 8 which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it now he connects it back again for had they known it they would not have crucified so if they did not crucify there would not be the issue of the cross and there will not be access to this hidden wisdom that has to do with our glorification verse 9 but as it is written i had not seen nor ear heard this is in context of that same wisdom are we together now when you're studying scripture make sure you keep following the line don't just pick a scripture and delve he's communicating something here i have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god had prepared for them that love him verse 10 now we see the holy spirit introduced into the equation the bible says but god had revealed them 
unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god the deep things of god not the things of god the deep things of god so he starts by saying i came to you and i present to you christ crucified that if you understand the mystery of christ crucified alongside the benefits one of the benefits if you are well taught one of the things you should be taught is that the implication of his crucifixion now has brought you to a realm where you can access what the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god so christ did not just die just to give us eternal life alone yes ultimately but that there are there are certain implications of his death and one of them tied to his crucifixion are we together now is the ability to access what the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god and the bible says that hidden wisdom was prepared by god himself that at a point in the church age man will buy a technology called a mystery remember he said we speak this wisdom the goal is for you to access it but between you and that wisdom is a mystery you must understand it is not the wisdom that is the mystery the mystery is the name of the technology that transfers that mystery that wisdom from god to you he said we speak it in a mystery i go to sabo in a vehicle the vehicle is not me the goal is to take me to sabo but the means of transportation is called a vehicle the means of accessing this wisdom the bible says is a mystery so we are going to find out what this mystery is tonight and the bible says whoever finds that mystery will access the wisdom of god and the result of that encounter is glory glory that the saints in light don't just become glorified just because they want to on account of the death of jesus christ there is something that his death granted unto us are we together now and the bible says that if you find out one of those things that the death of jesus christ provided for you the hidden wisdom of god that is accessed through a mystery i stop because remember paul is teaching here and then paul now begins to introduce the person of the holy spirit as the searcher of the wisdom of god but he said my my point now let's leave the holy spirit issue we're coming there what is the mystery that communicates this thing that the bible calls the deep things the deep things what are they because whoever can access these deep things the bible calls them the hidden wisdom that not even the men of the world nor the princes knew if if they had known that the goal of jesus's death among other things was to grant us access to that mystery so that we will be glorified he said they would have made sure the lord of glory did not die are we together Galatians chapter 3 we're coming back here Galatians chapter 3 please give us from verse 10 you will be so blessed tonight my prayer for you is that the things you are going to learn you will so understand them and they will produce strange victory in your life in the name of Jesus Christ for as many as are of the works of the law are under the cause for it is written cost is everyone that continued not in the things that are written in the book of the law read on next verse please but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God it is evident for the just shall live by faith 12 it says and the law is not of faith but that man but the man that doeth them shall live in them 13 then he says christ hath redeemed us from the cause of the law and it tells us how he did that he says being made a cause 
for it is written cause is everyone that hangs on a tree we see the cross back again are we together now remember paul said christ crucified christ crucified that's his message when i came to you i looked at a lapse in your life that the foundation to remedy that lapse is a revelation of christ crucified and the full import of what the crucifixion does to you but i'm choosing an aspect of it that you can access the deep things of god on the strength of this revelation of christ crucified and on the strength of those deep things you can manifest glory the bible says that the blessing of abraham i've taught you the blessing of abraham is not cast not money the blessing of abraham is not even what we call the blessing the blessing of abraham is what the bible calls justification by faith that's the blessing of abraham the bible says abraham believed god and it was credited to him as righteousness so we like faithful abraham we believe god and then we are justified by believing him that the blessing of abraham justification by faith might come upon the gentiles through jesus christ and notice this he says that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith so all of this journey is to make sure that even when we are justified that's not the end of it that we get to a point where we may receive the promise of the spirit there is something about a technology that transfers the spirit into a man and the bible says it was because christ became a curse on the cross are we together now and then we believe in that substitutionary sacrifice like we call it and the implication is that we are justified by faith what does that mean we are declared not guilty we are declared blameless having the righteousness of god the righteousness of god is his very nature are we together on account of that righteousness the bible now declares that the spirit of god can come upon us we receive the promise of the spirit through faith then it stops there paul now is trying to explain to the people when the holy spirit comes what does he do when the holy spirit comes what is the implication if there was no cross there would not be death if there was no death there would not be burial there would not be resurrection there would not be exaltation justification and that meant that there would be no access to receive the life of god there would be no access to receive justification and ultimately we will not be able to access the person of the holy spirit the final journey was to make sure that every man can become a host of the spirit of god and the bible says if satan had known that that death was a string leading from one place they will make sure that the process did not even start are you getting what paul is teaching them now had they known that the whole goal was not to punish a man but to use a man like a scapegoat and transfer the spirit of god in man he said they would insist that jesus did not die are we together let's go back to our scripture first corinthians chapter 2 okay just leave us stand there but god had revealed them to us by his spirit are you seeing now so he has revealed them to us by his spirit we have accessed that spirit and so we have capacity to receive revelation from him and then he says something interesting he says for the spirit which spirit the same spirit we have received he's telling us certain things the spirit can do and one of it is that the spirit can search all things the deep things of god now we are investigating how to arrive there the bible tells us where the deep things are stored we're going to see it closely it says the deep things of god then he now digresses to explain something he said for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of that man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit are we together now so we know that the only person who can access whatever it is in god is the spirit of god you cannot receive anything from god without the spirit helping you do we agree next verse now we have received say i have received it says not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god why did we receive him it says that we may know that we may 
not just that we may feel spiritual that the spirit among other things is resident in us that we may know the things that are freely given did you hear the bible says god prepared certain things to be given to the saints for our glorification go back please to verse just go back to verse um, 5 now I believe from where we talk about the mystery it says okay verse 3 I think it's verse 3 Um, okay, six, six, six. I think it should be six. How be it? Thank you. We speak the wisdom of God among them that are perfect. The word perfect is matured. Yet, not the wisdom of this world, not the prince of this world that come to naught. Verse seven. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So, this wisdom is spoken but it is spoken in a mystery a mystery that god ordained are we together and the bible lets us know that by that mystery we can access everything that is given to us there is a spiritual system for accessing the deep things of god listen if you understand what i teach you tonight you will know from where strange and unusual songs come from if you understand what i teach you tonight you will know where strange ideas and supernatural solutions come from the bible tells you that in as a result of the death of christ that you can access the mind not just the mind of christ the mind of the father that resident there is the hidden wisdom called the deep things of God it says whoever can find it the Holy Spirit brings it to you but there is a mystery you must engage listen the Holy Spirit is many things one of what he is is a searcher but he does not just search until the mystery is engaged there is a mystery that you engage he no longer becomes a comforter he no longer becomes a he starts to search there is something that can be done on earth that switches the ministry of the spirit to go to the mind of the father and start searching the deep things and bring it to you and it says if you find it your life will spell glory paul is teaching them paul looked at their lives and said no everything i see happening to you should happens to human beings i don't see you accessing realities from another realm he said let me teach you something i i wanted to teach you a lot of things but i see there is no glory in your life let's start the lecture the foundation is christ crucified that when jesus christ hung on that cross the implication of everything that happened at calvary was to the end that we be justified comma to the end that we receive the spirit because no man knows what is in the heart of the man except that spirit so the father allowed his spirit who knows what is in his heart to be domiciled in every believer but the bible says that the spirit of god is many things he's a counselor he's an advocate but there is a mystery that can be engaged that will make the spirit to live whatever he's doing and start searching the mind of the father and bring to the saints something called the deep things he said the hidden wisdom and says god prepared it for my glorification many people have thought that this mystery is just to blast in tongues and once you blast in tongues the holy spirit starts searching how many times have you prayed in tongues in your life and you have seen that you prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened but we speak this mystery when we come to those who are matured and we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery do you know what paul is saying he's saying i am when i come to mature believers i know that i cannot teach them peripheral things i have to teach them the deep things of god but when i come to them i engage this mystery and the spirit of god starts to download deep things and it is those deep things i give them when i come to those who are matured 
he says we speak this mis this wisdom to them but in a mystery a mystery that only the holy ghost can deliver unto men listen i show you a secret tonight that is the secret of debt eternally there's no such thing as being bankrupt you will find this you apply this in your life in your business you will come up with things that will shock men everybody will know that this one this one cannot be from the earth realm it's not the wisdom of men so you can't learn it in school it's not the wisdom of the princes of this world so no elder can advise you into it this one is only available it was taught in the mind of God himself and only the spirit can access the mind of Christ but your own assignment is to find out what the mystery is the Bible says anytime that mystery is engaged the Holy Ghost starts to search There is a spiritual system for accessing deep hidden revelations there is a spiritual system for accessing strategies there are people on earth who have found this secret and their life becomes an unending wonder it looks like there is a fountain within them they have learned how to tap into an ability that is higher and greater than their age their level their education their everything this is what i want to teach you if you have this i can tell you happy easter if you don't have this we can rejoice for nothing and eat and go back and there is no glory in our lives there is a relationship between the sufferings of christ and the glory that follows the sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows the sufferings of Christ culminated in his crucifixion it didn't start in his crucifixion the sufferings of Christ started right from his passion at Gethsemane I hope you know that at Gethsemane that's where Christ became the second Adam because two things happened to Adam in the Garden of Eden first Adam lost what we call righteousness right the nature of God he lost it he still had the likeness of God but he lost the image the Holy Spirit he lost so if Christ were to be the second Adam he would have to lose those two things too are we together now yes and the only condition for Christ to lose righteousness is to become sin and he became sin through what we call in theology the doctrine of interpenetration that's what the communion is the mystery that two people become one a Jimmy and his wife now as far as god is concerned are one she has her own body he has his body but in the realm of the spirit they are one whatever accesses him can access her without permission if he agrees she will pay for it because they have become one are we are we together now and the bible says that when that communion was broken remember i think i've taught this many times in this place that the reason why there were 12 men you see do you know why it was only men in 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 um in, in the upper room that's where they had the communion they were men because men are the carriers of the seeds and sin is transferred through reproduction are we together now women don't carry the seeds women only receive the seed and give birth to another life so the men there were standing 12 of them in number 12 is the number of government so they were there it was the whole world prophetically entering into that covenant where man can now christ can now take up the nature of man that's why he said if you eat my flesh and drink my blood you have your life so he broke himself and said eat and it gave access for him to carry the whole nature of man watch this then he went to Gethsemane and he began to cry he said father if it be thy will let this cup pass what cup the cup was not death the cup was the Holy Spirit leaving him because the moment the Holy Spirit leaves him he cannot be in touch with heaven again <laughs> remember the connect of the mind remember it is the spirit when he said Eloi Eloi Lamak Sabak Tanai did the father reply because that which is flesh is flesh that which is spirit is spirit the Holy Spirit was not with Jesus on the cross if he was with Jesus the nails would not enter his hands 
he had to leave Jesus that was where the cry was happening for the first time the Trinity will be separated and he said can this cup this cup of disunion can it pass off me he said but it has to happen nevertheless not my will but yours be done that was the reason why when they held him from that time everything that happened to him was happening to Adam and whoever came from Adam you see that now then when he was hung on that cross the Bible tells us that you know the nails and everything and he stood there and listen to what he said he said father into thy hands I commend my spirit Jesus now went to hell I hope you know that Jesus went to hell to fight Satan not with the assistance of the Holy Spirit he went as man Adam to hell the Holy Ghost was not there no it was not there at all you see that if the Holy Ghost was there Jesus would not be able to go where he's going are we together now and he stood there defeated Satan collected the keys and then on the third day that same spirit that had left him now came back if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead the Bible says if that same spirit dwells now today in your mortal body it would do certain things i'm just giving us a little you know just play with our minds a little let's go back to what we're discussing he said that there is a mystery that activates the holy spirit searching the deep things of god and revealing it to us and he says tied to it is our glorification among the many things listen carefully among the many things that this mystery can bring is to transport the superior wisdom of God and to reveal them to man through the spirit that part of the blessings of the crucifixion of Christ and the import of redemption is the ability to engage a mystery that causes the Holy Spirit to search the deep things of God and reveals to man the mystery that controls creativity the mystery that controls innovation the mystery that controls divine strategy the mystery that controls supernatural solutions the mystery that can stir up every dormant gifting and ability in man the hidden mystery let's discuss the technology of activating this mystery Jesus number one write this down the first thing I want you to note is that the mind of God is a compendium of infinite wisdom. Write it down. The mind of God. God has a mind. The Bible says that the spirit can search everything in the mind of God, even the deep things. So write it down. That God's mind, God himself, his mind is full of infinite wisdom. Number two whatever this mystery is we know that it is engaged by speaking write it down we're establishing something now please just help those under the anointing let's be sensitive i believe that god will be giving a lot of impartations the mystery is engaged by speaking so we know that for the activation of this mystery your mouth has a role to play now listen very carefully number three you see this thing we call speaking in tongues look at me everybody look at me we have missed a lot in it those who taught us speaking in tongues taught us that every time you open your mouth you are doing the same thing speaking in tongues has dimensions and all those dimensions have allocations in the spirit for what they achieve just because it looks like you are doing the same thing so you think every time you are speaking in tongues this mystery is activated by speaking there is the speaking in tongues that is for intercession there is the speaking in tongues that is engaging the mystery that makes the spirit of god to start searching the deep things of God it's not just that because you open your mouth you are praying I'm going to guide you you will understand what I'm saying shortly it is the mystery of speaking in an unknown tongue listen but the goal 
is not intercession nor supplication the goal is a system of reception that speaking in tongues is not only an instrument for intercession there is a dimension of tongues that you speak to receive you receive things in the spirit by engaging that mystery not just interceding for sinners not just praying there is a dimension of the hidden wisdom of God that every time you begin to utter tongues with that revelation and with that consciousness the Holy Spirit does not just come as an intercessor it's a message you are sending to the spirit that I am in need of a mystery and the Holy Spirit says I get the message you are saying there is a way you can pray that he knows I'm interceding for a sinner. He joins you. There is a way you can pray but that there is a tongue you can utter from the earth. That is a message to the Holy Ghost. I am stranded. I need something for my glory. And he goes and starts to search. Most of us think every time we pray in tongues because it sounds the same. You think you are saying the same thing. those who have taught praying in tongues have only taught it with respect to accessing spiritual power like okay power if you want power just pray in tongues or if you want to feel like you're a prayer warrior there are all kinds of dimensions the same electricity powers a keyboard the same electricity powers fan the same electricity but there is a way you can channel it there is a dimension of tongues that is not for intercession it is a dimension the moment you utter it the spirit of god goes to the mind of the father that the end of that tongues is a revelation of something you did not know before you started praying that tongues cannot stop with you say amen and you go back no way no way mm -mm. you don't just pray and finish the one you are praying when you pray just say thank you jesus lord i give you all the glory because you were interceding and you were building up your spirit man but that when you engage these tongues something must leave god and manifest physically you can hold it and say this is the answer i give you thanks then the secret was revealed to daniel a king came and said tell me my dream and the interpretation otherwise i would destroy you daniel showed us i don't know what daniel did in the night he said king there is no man that can know this thing no he said but wait before you kill us give me time in the night when others will help that lady please in the night when i don't know what daniel did but all i know is that daniel tapped into a frequency in the spirit and daniel received this let me tell you this listen very carefully I know this because there was a prayer Daniel was praying that made Gabriel to come to earth not to fight but to bring a message it's in your Bible he was praying a prayer many people say that no it was not a it was not just a prayer of warfare it, Gabriel said I am sent something about your prayer called heaven I am come with the answer understanding and the Bible says this mystery God ordained it for our glory. Daniel was an ordinary man. These saints in the Bible were ordinary people. It is these mysteries that turn them to become like gods upon the earth. What kind of men are these? They want to kill somebody and a human being with flesh and blood says give me time he goes to the secret place and says king i have your answer and the king looked at him the dreamer forgot his dream the dreamer forgot his dream and someone went to bed and all of a sudden came back this one is not word of knowledge oh this is a download of a strategy word of knowledge gives you in part this one comes to give you an information imagine what that would do to your life imagine that you can tap let me tell you listen without this strategy you will never move forward in life you will get to points where you will stay grounded nothing on earth has the capacity to move you and the spirit of god just stands and, oh i'm born again ba, 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 ba. you can pray for three hours and intercede for everybody and the holy ghost will say if you know this is what apostle paul 
that guy was a dangerous guy that Paul you see Paul came and saw the believers and knew what was wrong he knew what was wrong with their spiritual life you guys are zealous you guys pray all the time but there's something you don't have let me teach you remember they were filled with the Holy Ghost already what he did in chapter 12 14 was to explain to them but Paul saw that they were not maximizing certain things he said let me teach you you see all these mysteries I share let me show you how they come this is Paul teaching now Paul says I am ordinary some of the apostles knew Jesus before me but I was taught this mystery and every time I engage it it was while Paul was doing this that the Holy Ghost brought him a mystery he said church let me arrange the gifts of the spirit now in a way that will profit the body that's not normal you don't do that by education let me tell you there are things God has brought to me by this truth you see ba, when the truth of scripture comes to you from heaven you may not be able to share everything but there are truths some of this system of operating in the anointing this is how they came a visitation son this is how this thing works if you understand what I'm saying brothers and sisters the next time you go to pray many of you will have some of you have done it unconsciously that's why you see people come to testify I went to bed and I had a visitation no nobody just comes they are called they may use the face of a man they may God had mercy on you you just knew you were praying something about your prayer called heaven listen read your Bible and see men who called heaven some did not get an answer some got an answer the bible calls it a mystery how could god leave men on earth without an assistance do you think god knows god does not know that you need to prosper do you think god does not know imagine the sicknesses in this world do you not know that even the anointing most of us are stranded we don't even know how to use it effectively it is the Holy Ghost that comes look at Jesus Jesus saw a man and knew that the only thing that will heal this man is to spit on the ground he never repeated it again a mystery that came look at how Joshua it was divine strategies that gave people victory in the Bible none of those strategies were repeated again they happened just once they, they, how can a man look and say I will go over a, a Jericho seven times knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and can look at that gentleman who gave a testimony he had it's a it's a true testimony i got i got it too he broke his I, I i don't know whether he broke his teeth or i think they were supposed to remove four of his teeth or something an accident and then something else happened to him and the gentle i don't know what he did though but the gentleman said he went to bed and all of a sudden a revelation comes and he gets up and he's god nothing just happens like that it's not true there is a dimension of god's glory that will never manifest in our lives for as long as all you think will bring you glory and greatness in life is just certificate or wisdom from age or just searching google how to be rich enter how to do business enter how to be a good wife enter for as long as that's what you are doing that's sophia the wisdom of men there is a superior dimension most of us know it but you think it just comes just by looking at the bible alone no there is a dimension where you can call for the assistance of heaven there are certain things let me tell you God taught me about the anointing he taught me not by saying he taught me by imparting that knowledge I can't teach it because it was not through words it's, it's a lecture but it came like a software see what makes men unusual is the mysteries that upgrade their lives not their skin not their body 
when you see an ordinary person and you see a dimension of result that is not human go back and ask either a witch or a wizard appeared to that person or something must have happened in the realm of the spirit hmm. are we together that you can go back and look at your family and they can say what is special about the easter and he said lord there has to be an answer to what is happening in this family are you not seeing the way our families are how many of you have seen that the solution cannot come from it the deep things of god there are pastors stranded in ministry look at the foolish instructions people do to rise in life it does not sound human but because it came from the mind of god it produces strange results go around the city seven times because it came to a man he went round and the city collapsed are we blessed i'm sharing with you a reality that i've worked in myself stupid things but came i know how to call for help from heaven if you don't know in this wicked world the devil will eat you up and spit out your bones it's not every tongue that is just for building up your spirit there is a dimension of praying in tongues that is a cry of mercy in the realm of the spirit i need assistance oh god i am stranded except you help from heaven i cannot do anything and all of a sudden an emissary is sent from the realm of the spirit and comes to deliver as desired paul said the hidden wisdom that god ordained for our glory Are you getting blessed now let's continue let me show you something go to verse 10 verse 10 please sit down sit down thank you sit down it says but god has revealed them to us listen carefully it says by his spirit for the spirit searched all things yea the deep things of god that's why we stop right now paul is trying to explain to them that the holy spirit is the searcher of these things but now he's telling us that there is a limitation to this thing and here's the limitation go ahead he says okay we've, we've, we've read go to verse 12 verse 12 now we have received the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we may know the things that are freely given to us 13 which things we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the holy ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual 14 but the natural man now watch this this is the limitation to this experience once you are natural excuse me once you are natural he says but the natural man cannot receive these things why he says for they are the nature of that mystery is such that you must be a child to be able to receive it is too childish for natural people to access it what is it in a dance and breakthrough what is it in an instruction and miracle alert these are manifestations of the hidden wisdom of god for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned two more verses 15 but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he is judge of no man. 16. For who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? The word instruct him there is not just to direct him. Who had known? Let's, let's see what Amplified says. Amplified puts it beautifully there. Give us Amplified. For who has known or understood the mind, the counsel, and the purposes of the Lord so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge he said but we have the mind of christ and do hold the thoughts the feelings and the purposes of his heart it's a question he was asking who there he says who which ordinary man knows the mind of christ that he can even instruct him he said we do not qualify to know the mind of christ but by that spirit he says we have the mind of christ we have access something that men cannot have the ability to hold the thoughts the feelings the purposes of his heart 
men rise in this kingdom through the mysteries that they know men rise in this kingdom your life and my life is not just going to rise just because of our education as good as it is your life is not going to rise just by the informations there are things in your life the answer is not in any book on earth there are things there are solutions in your life that need to come that there is no other way of accessing it I show you a system that was created in the kingdom for our glorification someone met me one time a gentleman and he said he works in the bank and he said they gave them an assignment to bring a particular target me too when i had that amount i said haba where is this guy a thief where is he going to go and raise that kind of money within one month or whatever let me tell you there are things in your life you stand and look at this mountain you do everything you know to do it will not move at that level you stop trying you allow the spirit of god remember i told you the mind of god is a compendium of infinite wisdom i dare to tell you there is an answer to every question it just depends on who tells you the answer there is an answer the bible is full of men women people who they, do you know do you know i believe with all my heart that it was part of this hidden wisdom that guided solomon to give a thousand bond offering yes he loved the lord but that kind of thing cannot be normal it's not just no it's not just a, will you carry a thousand bond? no solomon there is a formula to get what you are looking for and it directed him and he did something that was foolish and god came he said you called me he didn't say you slaughtered animal you called me i'm here solomon what should i do for you and solomon said so this thing works ah look at the kinds of instructions that would come you guys are not going to win no? why you are not circumcised ah what is the relationship between my being circumcised and holding a knife I am a warrior the angel said you can go and fight and die like a chicken i've told you the force that controls this result is your circumcision not your sword so if you want to win circumcise everybody imagine the enemies watching men sit down for seven days they can't walk they can't move he said what's wrong with these people warriors he said a, a ghost came and said we can't win your knife is sharp but you are not circumcised and he said you cannot win david went and carried five stones does that make sense to you carried five stones to kill a giant when he came and stood before goliath goliath said abba david me i know i will kill you but at least respect me am i a dog is he a dog that you are chasing he didn't know that that thing was a mystery there's nowhere where stone was carried to kill anybody except the one that the angels use hailstone to kill people a mystery was revealed to that young boy and he stood before goliath with his foolishness and arrogance and took his head down used his knife cut it and gave it to the birds that one experience brought him a wife he became tax-free are we together his family was exempted from all and he was given great wealth and honor say the deep things of god say it again the deep things of god let me tell you this you know why i'm teaching you this because there are many people who believe just because you prophesy and say in the name of Jesus enter a new dimension everything will change about their lives most men of God will want you to believe that just because they prophesy everything will change there are answers that must come to you from heaven by yourself that you go to bed in the night and wake up with something that works for only you nobody who applies what was revealed to you that it will work for it was sent from heaven for you get what i'm saying now i don't mean to be disrespectful but you can get up and see just because you don't see koinonia posters around you now go and then don't produce poster too for you is copy 
and you find out that no people say i don't know what you are doing you didn't inform me i said ah, but how are they doing it here they are not just doing it here it was received that's why it's working Ejimi, you were there when i told you god gave me the solution for the spreading of koinonia messages is there i came and told him i said god has given me the answer no selling videos no packaging anything put it online and the lord said he will give it wings that was the instruction the hidden wisdom for our glory look the blessing that the lord has brought today because of the ability to access the deep things of god brothers and sisters imagine other things that can happen to your life imagine how the god can end that mockery in your family overnight by one encounter with the wisdom of god do a b c and you stand up foolishly and do it and that's the end of it do you believe what i'm telling you listen there are there are families that are suffering that even welfare can't help them no matter how you give to them the the level of trouble in that family is such that even one destiny helper cannot be able to help them because the need is recurrent it's not one time if they eat today there's no hope 11 people nobody is educated nobody went to school nobody can do any business they are all old brother you need something that is not in this earth this is a message of hope this is a message of hope young men listen to me if you don't access this you will never be established in your life i promise you fifty thousand per month will not establish you for life i give you a guarantee go and put your money in the bank and get five percent per annum and let me see how much in 10 years that's 50 percent and see how much that will help to build your life most successful people will never tell you everybody knows what he did in the secret you are just seeing the result a man gets up from nowhere and builds an estate they call it favor but they won't tell you the dynamics your favor is real i testify your favor is real your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your goodness is real i testify let me tell you this in one of the days of the seven days prayer and fasting i went to the lord and i prayed a simple prayer and i went to bed now this this these are occurrences that happen to me all the time i was i woke up in the night and usually I go to bed there was no light and I woke up and found out someone had on my lamp my lamp physically now these are experiences that happen to me all the time opened my lamp and then I saw no not this book another one opened and a biro there I, I know because I knew the moment I see this I know God wants to speak to me and I just said Lord I'm ready to write and one two three four God just brought something to my life I said that's it God whatever it is you have done for me I rejoice forever I cried for over one hour seven days prayer and fasting I said my God my God brothers and sisters if your eyes is not open from heaven you will not see if your ears are not open from heaven you cannot hear a man can receive nothing except it is given to him you hear me tell you this a man can you hear me just prophesy and say in the name of jesus it's not just what i'm speaking there is something i receive that is released through what i'm saying that creates the effect when i say the part it's not just because i'm anointed everybody operates by the secrets that are working in their life hallelujah I share this thing with you because I want God to surprise you that you can see this a family that have no business buying a car they don't know nothing about finances they can access something 
and in two weeks all of them are on their knees saying God what is this where did this one come from listen the Bible says it was meant for our glorification not our shame God does not lift men to bring shame to their lives. We don't know his system. It's a mystery that Paul used. Think how many times they tried to kill Paul. Think how many times they tried to do whatever they would do with Paul. There is no such thing as hopelessness for any man. Once you are alive, you are only hopeless until the mystery leaves heaven and gets to you that's why the prince of Persia fought the information not the angel no don't get this to daniel if daniel receives this something will happen let me tell you that fight was not old testament fight that fight is a fight that happens every time something is leaving heaven and coming to you satan will he knows that one thing that will he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel he sent a word to one lady and it changed the story of our generation that nobody in your family rises to a level and all of a sudden something enters you and you just turn and let me tell you i can know what has entered you by the results that follow these things eh take your eyes away from physical things when god gave me this physical things are remote controlled forget all these things you desire it's not by chasing them there is a central control button in life i guarantee you that brings you these things one of it is this physical results you have seen it happen in this ministry you have seen it again and again no man can do these things except god be with him I'm saying this to you because the reality of the death of Christ is useless until your life brings glory to your family. We keep mocking ourselves as Christians, going everywhere. Jesus died for me. I am born again. There is nothing that symbolizes glory, not in our lives, not in the life of anybody. Every unsaved person is still unsaved. There is something you and God can do. That will make the hardened sinner in your family within two weeks you will come one night and hear him listening to a message from your phone you say sorry sir this is a christian message say you don't know what happened to me just leave me quietly you just know that god has come to your family something you did called for his help and he came hallelujah you hear that lady one point hand is touched changes to four points you try it and see if it will change it's not the hand it's the mystery it's not the hand so most people just think oh i will just confess just because the bible says to speak and in the name of jesus i decree and declare oh receive this and you find out nothing happens because you see it is what supports what you are saying not just the speech itself you may not know but your results begin to show first you would think it's a coincidence so you are not sure you are even afraid of the result but then you see that it becomes predictable predictable ah, ah. someone blessed sam today in the evening someone blessed him next tomorrow someone blessed him next tomorrow someone blessed him and you find out that no this this is not so your little church one member comes then the next thing five people come you see somebody who say i'm a keyboardist my friend is a drummer the Lord just led us to your church. Say, no, but this can't be a coincidence. I've been in ministry for 10 years. No, there is no coincidence. Everything is intentionally calculated. Even the disappearance of favor from your family was intentionally programmed. It will take something from the spirit. Listen, there are some of us here. You graduated with a third class. Let's tell ourselves the truth. If it is in this Nigeria, there is no human being who is going to employ you ordinarily i'm not making you scared there are some of us who what we have studied with all humility what we have studied that value is not celebrated nor needed in nigeria 
is the truth there are some of us because of the tribes we come from there are wicked men that sit in positions in this country and make sure they frustrate you there are some of us even if you collect salary the 10 other people in your family who need you to eat will make that salary look like 10 naira you need to access these mysteries are we together you need to access these mysteries i will show you how Oh God, I'm grateful. Oh God, I'm grateful. Oh God, I'm grateful. Time will tell whether we are just talkatives or dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom. Time will tell whether what you are receiving is a cunningly devised fable or is a programming that will make you surprised at your own life. That somebody will look at you and say i know you are a villager you say you you insulted me for 30 years but i found something that in six months brought glory to my life that you will bring the gospel to your family you bring the not just the gospel you are able you may be the last born but this thing does not do with age whoever can get the holy spirit to bring you something from the mind of god it will change your life understand this you see all these manifestations that happen it's not just the anointing you see let me tell you something with when you catch a spiritual mystery there is an effect of that understanding on your environment you see that so every time people come under that circumference they even without directly receiving it they become benefactors of that experience it's true if you have a vision and you see an angel now anyone within that vicinity will benefit there are others that opening of that portal insight will come to them they were not praying just because you open the portal someone will benefit from it the prophet opened the eyes of another person he never said do you have faith do you believe because he could see someone's eyes open But the natural man, the man who is scientific, the man who laughs at anything that is of God, the man who looks at all these things and says, look, let me tell you, I, I went to Harvard Business School. I'm a smart man. I know everything about economy. I, I went to so, so, so business school. Nothing is wrong with that. I did this and that. Look, I'm a smart gentleman. I got this and that. The Bible says those kinds of people. To them when you are talking like this they are some of these bloggers that write nonsense and extract messages like this and say look at the rubbish that they are teaching members and another natural man will concur and say yes so they teach people to dance in church they teach people to jump like fools ah religion the opium of the masses i don't know who taught that but what i am telling you is the mystery that men have accessed and produced wonders with you see if this ministry was not successful many of you think you are just talking just because of this is let me tell you something with results results strengthen your message are you hearing this now that's why for many of you no one has received your gospel results defy argument you can argue with a man but you can't argue with results a woman can be barren but when that woman is pregnant it's not water that is in her stomach it's a human being This earth, you see, is like a computer game. Whoever has the control button will make nonsense of Satan in this earth. There are things I have learned that have surprised me how Satan hid this thing from the church. And those who access these things are those who do witchcraft and Scientology and all of this. So the condition is they initiate you into those devilish things. They say, come. They put incisions. They do all kinds of occult groups. And then they show you something that has always been there. Always been there. You sell your soul to the devil for money. You sell your soul. But, and, it, and you know, we preachers insult people. Why sell your soul? But hunger. 
Was it not hunger that took Israel to Egypt? If they were satisfied, they would not go. There was hunger and they all went. Hunger is still taking men to Egypt. We must be able to find a system to make Goshen fruitful so that they don't need to go to Egypt. Don't sit down and tell people, uh, why, why are you doing this? Why will you go and sleep with a man to get uh, a job? Can you, do you know the mystery that can give the sister the job? Come, let me pray for you. Except I'm a man of God. You will get a job in two weeks. Five years, she has not gotten the job. And she just says, don't mind this guy. My family is dying there. And this arrogant pastor wants to leave me in pain. But happy are you, brothers and sisters, that you can look at a man and enter a family. And they said, look, look at us. Sorry, we're embarrassed. There is nothing to eat. Our father is about leaving Jesus Christ and saying that by next week he's going to go to a harbourless in the village and you say daddy give me 24 hours something will happen in this house give me 24 hours and the man says you are a young boy we did all this jesus thing those days in boys brigade he said no problem i agree with you sir just allow me and within 24 hours something happens and the man calls you and says sorry i don't understand i'm, I'm a proud man i usually don't talk to small boys but sit down and you tell him jesus is still the way Jesus is still the life. truth. Jesus is still the life. How about that, my Habalist? Leave him. I brought you the reality. He said he gave it for our glory. Listen, hear me, church. If we trivialize the desperation of men to see the glory of God in their life, we will lose our members to occultists. Did you hear what I said? any pastor any prophet any apostle any man of god that trivializes the importance of the members experiencing the glory of god i guarantee you a day will come our young men our keyboardists will go to shrines because they must eat they must become they will become herbalists our ladies will go and fraternize with the gates of hell we will be there jumping on stage dispensing all kinds of things there are things that pertain to life and godliness not just godliness to life your child must go to school to life your child can be born again and not be educated and as a result your child will become a slave to every other person there are some of us everyone in your family works for someone they distribute them to go and be slaves you are 10 in your family nobody can stand alone you go and help this uncle wash his car you Abba. your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your kindness is real I testify. Hallelujah. Look at someone like Kenny. Look at this gentleman. I, I don't mean to make him feel bad. His dad has gone to be with the Lord. His mother has gone to be with the Lord. Everybody that can help him in life has gone. He's on his own. It's easy for a preacher who has food in his house to run your mouth and say you will make it and leave this gentleman by the time he suffers his sister is crying everybody is crying this guy will get into gambling he will get into occultism he will get into every kind of demonic thing that's what we are we are losing our members in church because they are not seeing the reality the validity of what the word says we are losing our ladies to ungodly people we are losing our gentlemen our fathers are becoming herbalists covenanting generations in shrines because hunger is taking them to egypt i will never preach a god who is not alive it's a vow i made right from when god called me I will preach a God that can be proven here and now that he is not only the saver of souls he's the lifter of men he's the anointer of men he's the revealer of secrets I love you too much some of you as you are hearing me now you check your phone and you see missed calls from your loved ones we have not eaten for three days please if you're a man of God here let's take people seriously let's not just be acting games with people's destinies I bring you good news there is a way out there is a way out there is a way out we have orphans in this place we have widows in this place we have widowers in this place it's not their fault that they could not be educated do you blame a child was it his fault 
you see a woman of 60 years with her two children there is no physical hope of any breakthrough they are the ones who give us offerings and we collect as men of god they are the ones who carry their last money and kneel down and give us our job is to collect and eat let me tell you god will soon start punishing us men of god who are collecting people's offering and not giving them the truth that will lift them after service i can stand here and some of you will carry your last money and come and give me and i will collect and go back will be tied me if i don't teach you the truth it's not fair we keep destroying people's destinies in the name of church look at how many young men sit down and they are asking man of god you are established me i'm not show me now so that both the sower and the reaper will rejoice but i keep telling you you just keep sowing in my life and sit down there while i am enjoying it as i'm talking to you now my food is ready some of you you love god but right where you are there is no food for you to eat how long will this continue we say it's easter jesus died he conquered satan oh dead where is your sting we mock ourselves in church and the only people who rejoice are the men of god your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your goodness is real i testify listen gentlemen let me teach you something there are things you can learn you will bring one song one song not ten songs nobody rises as a result of a full album there is one song that comes from there is the one you compose that your worship teammates will clap for you and with it they will invite you to two or three ministrations and you go back as usual but there is one that comes from the throne you will sit down and hear them playing it in africa and you will mint money as if you are a charmer and god says that's not the issue i'm just proving to you that everything from above is above all there are some of you there's one idea that this mystery can bring you go and meet someone and say sir this is it and the person says because of this come i will read the bible look at modern history and see people's lives change when you hear some of the songs that he'll song right look at the young guys they are not even neatly dressed you know that this one is the grace of god upon a vessel you ask them to compose songs by themselves and see the rubbish they will write There are music artists in this nation we all know where they got their songs from it does not make sense and it has blessed them that's to tell you there is a force that is not human you listen to it you can't stop something in it draws you most of us write songs you carry a paper and a biro and sit down with the consciousness of the hunger that is in front of you and you just find a scripture where will i lift up my eyes two times I will say amen. I will say amen. The Lord be praised two times. It will never, never sell. Not in this kingdom. If, if, listen, you are laughing. I'm very serious with what I'm saying. If it is God's result, it must come from him. There are pastors that love God doing everything they were taught in Bible school, but it's not working. Because the forces that keep men down the forces that keep men down can only be dislodged by an intelligence that is not earthly. As for me, Joshua Selman, I have made my choice that this is how I'm going to live my life. My life is too risky to be human. This, the earth is too wicked for me to live just as a human being. I must live as a divine being because it is he that cometh from above that is above all. Are we together we have doctors here if you follow the normal course the thing they are doing in shika you will never really rise because one day you will see somebody who will look at you and say dr david i know you are qualified dr halima but because you are not from my village i sit on your destiny i am professor this and that and he says all right sir you go back and engage this mystery and come out and in his presence he will sign you as you are rising tomorrow he will come in the dedication of a foundation and he just say, ah that is a is my own i wanted to tell you that i didn't stop rising after all of your mockery my god is still alive
listen don't you dare laugh at any man that understands what i'm saying they may carry their 200 naira trouser and surprise you i bring you a message of hope brothers and sisters this storm that rage over our families will not rage forever there is a way out this easter there is a way out there is a way out the way out is to be able to access this hidden mystery now sit down let me explain to you the last thing and then we'll pray Hallelujah. pray i'm already seeing an electric cable sparking is what i'm seeing in the spirit hallelujah the overflow by the roadside there's someone receiving a healing anointing that overflow overflow too now there's someone receiving a healing anointing a healing anointing that's what i'm saying a healing anointing it will be by the spirit you may not be a preacher but you are receiving it and it will change your life oh what business can lift me let me try this let me try that and you keep crying you access this mystery and you are sitting down and here it comes and your life rises and changes i know a woman years ago she she got into coca-cola business and the only reason why she got into coca-cola business was because she was just sitting down according to what she told me and it was like a vision and she saw a like a what they call this thing this thing they buy container and she was bringing coca-cola from it immediately she knew that this was where my prosperity was you see why many of us keep trying things and wasting our time you are trying you need to receive god knows where your money is your money is not everywhere it is in the place directed geography matters when it comes to do prosperity isaac sowed in that land and the woman started it mysteriously help started coming for her and that was how this woman rose up do you know when i spoke with this woman from what i know about financial intelligence I, I saw how unfair life can be for such a woman to be prospering. I think the only thing that woman may know is just how to count money and all of that. But just because she was directed, the Lord is my shepherd and so I shall not want. Hallelujah. The character of this kind of prayer, listen carefully let me tell you the difference between praying in tongues the prayer language for your spiritual building your edification and the prayer that is for reception number one when you pray these kinds of prayer listen the kind of prayer that receives is not a prayer that is done with aggression your mind has to be alert listen carefully i'm giving you there are certain kinds of prayer that the power of god comes upon you you are praying in tongues you must exert energy because of the gravity of what is happening in the spirit these tongues these tongues you see is the kind of tongues that as you are communicating god allows your mind to still be alert because something is happening as you are activating certain things ideas are coming it's not just the kind of tongues that you go to the forest alone and you are shouting this one you are praying you are receiving something is coming from heaven for you to receive your mind must be alert as you pray your mind must be alert as you pray it's not every kind of prayer that your mind is alert there are times you are just praying sometimes you are not even yourself five hours will pass you don't know because there is a dimension but when you are praying to activate this mystery your mind must be alert to receive that which god is bringing number two listen everything received 
must be documented or preserved immediately because of the nature of how spiritual things are listen carefully spiritual things are very volatile you can lose a spiritual information in five minutes and it will take the grace of god to receive sometimes it can be a vision that vision you can't understand it immediately so you find a way of preserving it my phone is full of voices of encounters sometimes i'm praying and the things i'm seeing i start recording it immediately because i know if this thing sleeps it may not come back again I, is somebody getting this now most of you when these kinds of things happen you say no problem let me finish my three hours prayer and it leaves never comes again that was a five years breakthrough that just disappeared in one strategy you see why prophets were writers when i'm praying i pray with my books my is on my hand my phone everything because there are times i will need to draw there are times i will need to quickly write there are times i will need to record i get up in the morning i i found out that sometimes writing is too slow how many of you have gotten up and you literally had seconds to preserve something seconds if it escapes that second sometimes when god is merciful to you he will draw you to start praying you think you are just praying you are repeating the same thing and there the dream comes again Are we together let me tell you something i have gotten information in pieces that the complete picture came within the span of three years spiritual things are very strange you can get one part you need to preserve it because you will need that part the other part will come december the next year and then the last piece comes january when you piece three of them together they equate a dimension of breakthrough that your life will never recover from so when you are praying these kinds of prayer you can go to the place of prayer knowing that my purpose of prayer is to receive a strategy i'm going there lord i'm going to receive and all of a sudden you are praying you are praying you are alert you are alert there are some times in the midst of your prayer you will find out that the grace to pray supposedly lifts you can't pray again don't just get up and say it's a demonic attack be silent his voice is coming something is coming most of us don't understand these dynamics of prayer there are times you are praying and you just feel like sitting down somewhere help them please and you just sit down somewhere quietly like a zombie you are even afraid because you don't want people to think that you came and you were joking you see the mistake we make when we get to the place of prayer we just shut the door and make sure everybody around is hearing us to justify our spirituality we are cheating ourselves of dimensions there are times you can go to prayer and for two hours nobody has heard you you've not even started the prayer you are sitting down and for two hours you are like a librarian dictating mysteries that you yourself don't understand one day god will say remember what i told you go to your book page 75 check the last column that's the answer for what you are looking for there are times that i've gone to make reference to books things i wrote 2008 2009 i just remember i've seen this image somewhere and god says remember i go and look for the book i remember when koinonia was going to start that's when i remembered that god had revealed that thing to me 2005 I now when I was searching the book immediately I opened I saw everything revealed verbatim do you believe what I'm sharing with you we are going to pray many of us lose it listen to me every time you stand before a challenge and you want to pray don't just go and wail oh God you too you know how we are if you don't arise you can cry you can do everything you want to do but the moment you pray do you know many times you will see your prayer alternating you know that the last 30 minutes was warfare the next 30 minutes is not warfare that that prayer they all have their characteristics you can know that i was praying for two hours but the last 20 minutes of that prayer is this one is is a serious warfare what is happening you thought that after two hours it will go and all of a sudden a grace for prayer comes again and you can push through another two hours there are times you go to pray you cannot even reach 20 minutes if you are not careful you think you are backsliding 
it is the context of the communication of the spirit religion is a dangerous thing it will destroy your prayer life there are times i've sat down to pray from morning till evening and i'm unable to say a word highest worship is just playing i want to get up and maybe the only thing i can say in that prayer session is thank you jesus thank you jesus i give you all the praise thank you jesus here it comes i'm writing thank you jesus okay teach these people this thank you jesus your people don't understand this thank you jesus the way to go about this is to do a b c d thank you jesus okay don't worry i will reveal to you the answer during leaders meeting thank you jesus they that are led by the spirit of god you see when you understand what i'm teaching you you will not only command signs and wonders your life will be a sign and a wonder we win in life by strategies if naomi never went to the farm of boaz she would never marry marriageable but no strategy if the walls of jericho the people carried their sword and tried to bring down that gate they would have slaughtered them like chickens just the arrows from the watchmen would kill them and destroy them it takes strategies to win you have dreams where is the strategy when I meet pastors, they tell me their message, but they don't tell me the strategy. God said, go and raise me a people. Where do you think these people are? And how are you going to fulfill that mandate? A friend called me and he said, um, I should advise him, is it right? Wonderful friend that I love. He said, is it right for him to continue raising offering in church? I said, well, I don't have a problem with it, but go and find out how god designed the finances of your ministry to run go and pray and receive a strategy do you know the challenge with the body of christ we copy everything without thinking about it we copy if i start rolling this um, um, what do you call it my trouser now here i do it for two weeks as foolish as it is of course i know it's because you love me and you believe in the word of the lord upon me you will be surprised how somebody will go for lecture with trouser road like that he will never ask and say sorry is it an instruction that is followable or is a unique dealing or you, you are your leg is just paining you and you think you are doing this we copy everything and sometimes to our detriment are we blessed i want you to get results You have to be at a lot. You have to be focused. You have to be discerning. One of the ways that we engage these kinds of tongues is to write down all the issues of concern and pray while you look at it. There is a relationship between your eyes and the realm of the spirit. This eye is not just for looking. You can write these things. House rent. God, what is the way out? Are we together now? ministry is not growing i'm trusting you for the healing anointing i've read everything i know what is the way out you are walking around and you just allow the holy spirit pray through you all of a sudden you will just get an idea go down to zaria see apostle let him lay hands on you you see you think that that thing just came there is no other man of god you will meet no matter how anointed that will impart that healing anointing because the instruction is already tied to a vessel sometimes it may not even be to see a man of god there are graces when i wanted god led me to specific people and places i remember i've shared some of them with you we just do things at random no divine direction hallelujah I will never forget one day I was asking God a very serious question about ministry and all of a sudden literally as if as if a force came my hands were shaking and before you knew it I still don't know the name that I typed a YouTube video enter and all of a sudden one old old gray Baba just appears like this with one 25 minutes message and I listened to it that message changed my life I searched for other videos the, the message did not even finish but it contained my answer
Hallelujah. Are you blessed? You have to learn this if you must rise. There are two ways to rise in life. Hustle if you want to. Keep moving around and knocking. Or go to God and say, my God, show me the way. Show me the way. God can help men. Oh. Koinonia, hear me. My God can help men. This trial and error we are doing with our lives is too much. Sometimes the injury that will come from trying may not allow you to try another day again. So the key is to be circumspect. Access the deep things of God. If you're naming tonight's message then is is titled accessing the deep things of god i'm giving you a secret this is what i do with my life lord i thank you sometimes a scripture is coming sometimes the voice of god comes for you sometimes a mystery comes sometimes an instruction comes you see that god can give you all kinds of foolish instructions let me tell you do you know there was a day I do this every once in a while but there was a day god instructed me i was just lying down i i wasn't asleep and i was praying and all of a sudden i just sensed the anointing and all of a sudden the spirit of god told me stand up and lie down flat on the ground like get up from your bed oh, and lie. imagine if somebody opened my door he said this is it I've, I've i've always known that this guy there is something occultic he's doing and you would think as I lie down, I will feel one ghost. I saw nothing. I had nothing. I lay down like that for about maybe 20 minutes. Honestly speaking, I even started sleeping small. And later the voice just came, go to bed, go and sleep. The next meeting that we went, I can't remember where, I saw a dimension of the grace of God that I couldn't understand. I said, what happened? And God told me, while you were lying down, your something was happening to you you don't have to feel it you believe it god is not a fool this how some of you can be there lord who is going to be my helper and god says come out in front of your house and just stand for 15 minutes the natural man lord what i'm, I'm educated and you stand there 10 minutes somebody passes and says, ah promise are you all right you say i'm fine of course you can't tell them it's god that's making you a fool like that and all of a sudden sometimes the 15 minutes will even finish and nothing will happen and you just feel disappointed and you go back say god this is what you did god is watching your aptness to obeying him one day you will be sleeping in the night and by 2 a.m god will say call pastor alpha just call and tell him what is the message Ah, God, how do I call a married man by 2 a.m.? God said, do it. Immediately you call. He said, I was just about to call you. Here is the message for you. The place is Uyo, not Lagos. That's all I saw in my dream. Look, believers, you need to be dynamic. When you are just straightforward and religious, there is no breakthrough. The operations of the spirit is like the wind. You can't tell where it's coming or where it's going. So is one who is led of the spirit there are people here who came from lagos because they were praying lord what do i do with my life and god says stand up come to zaria they can't tell you exactly why they are here that's why when you ask them those questions it's difficult for them to answer they don't want to look like they are stupid sometimes they themselves think they are stupid but keep watching god there is a mystery walking out then you will see the glory and the beauty why will god tell you to leave lagos this gentleman left Ghana and came. Help that lady. I said Lagos and truly, truly, she fell under the anointing. Praise God. Someone gets up and is enjoying oil money in Portacot. And God says, stand up and go and do two weeks in Zamfara. Another person can be living where there is an oil well and be dying. Whereas his money is in Sokoto as dry and harsh as the weather is your prosperity is where the voice of God is for you not greener pastures is not a location greener pastures is a realm where the voice of the spirit directs you there are people any other place you go you will not prosper you will prosper in Zaria someone will come in Zaria and be wondering what is in this place the only thing I saw was just a few shops here but a direction for you 
every lifting in this ministry and every greatness God has brought happen right here because we could access these mysteries are you ready to pray we are going to pray sit down you are not going to stand up sit down listen you are just going to play these instruments for me just lightly and then I just want you to pray don't shout and mm -mm, just take out time you just pray in the spirit right take out time and pray in the spirit and you will be surprised to be sensitive to what God will be doing for some as you are praying what you'll be receiving is impartation some as you are praying you will not even know what is happening to you not every information must be communicated in words some truths are imparted Just do what I'm telling you to do. Don't worry about those shouting. Pray in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Everywhere, inside, outside, you just pray. show us the secrets of our life oh god show us the way out let it come from heaven some of you are receiving things just because your mind is not understanding it you watch and see what happens to you a few days from now what you have received will start being revealed to you and you will see that this is what happened in koinonia oh, 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 oh. Lord, what is the way out for my business? What is the way out for my family? Lord, what is the secret to addressing this barrenness? Lord, what level of unction do I need for this ministry? Why is it not growing? Lord, why is my family stagnated? Why are the works of my hands challenged? Send me help from Zion, O God. just pray koinonia we are soaking in the glory everyone pray in the spirit lord why is my cgpa refusing to rise what must i do i have studied i've done my best go ahead pray lord what do i need to do where is my finances oh god where is it where is the key to the next level what is the formula for my establishment lord how will you bail my family out do i just meet anybody should i meet a particular helper if yes what is the name who is the helper is he in zaria is she in zaria do i need to go out of zaria lord what is the thing is my ministry in zaria is it in nigeria where is it where is my breakthrough? Pray. Show me the secrets of my destiny. Go ahead. We are not wasting our time. I, I guarantee you. The Bible says the natural man. The natural man some of you in the silence like the dew of harmon ideas begin to come that poultry is my will for you don't stop it 
that public speaking you are about to give up but it is where your finances is don't stop it looks like your church is not growing but you are called you just need an upgrade of the anointing answers coming from heaven spirit of the lord we ask you search for us the deep things search the mind of god concerning our destinies concerning our families concerning our ministries concerning our homes lord where will this budget money come from there is no human way it is going to come but i know that thou art the fountain of wisdom it is in your light that we see light show me show me open my eyes i am tired of doing what everybody is doing i'm tired of failing like everyone i'm tired of saying yes to just anybody open my eyes show me pray just three or four more minutes lord where is the anointing where is the place you want me to be meeting with you for prayer is it my room or do i need to go out of my house every night what is the timing what is my time of receiving revelation from you is there a unique time you want to give me from 12 to 2 every day is it a time you are giving me it may not be so for everybody but what time have you allocated for my visitation do i need to fast once every day do i need to go on a drive fast what do i need to do do i need to dance for seven days show me oh god there has to be a way out why are my heavens closed why do i fast and pray and yet nothing happens why are the nine graduates in my family jobless show me then the secret was revealed unto daniel and daniel blessed the god of heaven two more minutes go ahead and pray open my mind open my mind open my mind there is a way out there is a way to the wealthy place there is a way to the anointing there is a way to influence there is a way to access the mysteries of the kingdom there is a path which no foul knoweth the wealth of the lion has not trodden there show me oh god this mystery parts in the spirit these virgin dimensions in the spirit that mortal men cannot dare tread open my eyes oh god like a two-edged sword and let me see the path here marked for my destiny Hello, Kim Madonna. 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 Just be silent, everyone. Just be silent. Just be as silent as you can. Wherever you are, just be silent. The Lord is putting something in your spirit. Be still and know 
be still and receive be still and hear be still and enter be still and you will know just be silent for two or three minutes god is doing something in your life answers coming as words as impartations be still some of you god will be saying don't waste your time in that direction that's not the path for your life don't waste your time be still some of you god will be telling you the change will not come in one day just be patient i will visit your family but it will take time please be patient just be patient with me a few minutes and we're done be patient answers are coming think on your business while you are standing think on your family while you are standing think on your ministry while you are standing answers are coming from the throne coming from the throne God is telling you I will raise help for you it will not be with your resources that you will make this happen the helpers are coming the helpers are coming the helpers are coming this sickness is not unto death this sickness is not unto death I will give thee health and cure it is true that the healing ministry is my will for you it is true that the healing ministry is my will for you it is true that the healing ministry is my will it is true that the healing for you the ministry the healing ministry you will walk in it it is true that the healing ministry is Just be patient. I see sparks of light. It's a picture of illumination. You are receiving something in your spirit. God is giving some of us clarity. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands and I pray for you by the mercies of God that the same way God sends me inside by the angel of his presence, I pray for you. Whatever alignment your spirit must take, to not only hear his voice but receive of the impulses from the throne i make this happen for you now in the name of jesus i make this happen for you now whatever position your ears must take in the spirit your eyes must take in the spirit to clear up the blurry visions to make sure that the speakings are clear i pray for you in the name of jesus May the grace, the spirit of grace, make this happen for you even in this Easter. Supernatural ideas, innovative ideas, supernatural strategies, the strategies that force things to work. Some of you this week will not be over until you begin to see the fruits of superior wisdom this week will not be over until you see things that will marvel you happening by the spirit of god manifesting by the finger of god you will apply the things that you are receiving and you will watch it work it was not supposed to work but because it came by his voice you will see it rise i say to you you will see it rise i speak to you that you will see it rise before the miracle service on Friday some of you will only come for thanksgiving because before then that which you have received from heaven will walk like fire will walk like fire listen 
there are some of you the next meeting you will go for as a man of god you will be surprised to see the dimension of the operation of the gifts of the spirit you will go for your meetings and god will give you epochal revelations you will command the realm of the spirit at your beck and call in dimensions that you will be afraid of and that one experience will open the doors of finances open the doors of ministry increase membership bring increase for you listen there is a reign of wealth and prosperity that is coming upon this ministry you hear me as i speak i don't just talk about money just because no 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 no. there is a reign r-a-i-n of a dimension i have seen this thing many times in my visions a dimension all these miracle alerts are just messages do you know why because god wants to establish men fast to give us room to serve him there is a dimension i want you to write it write it down that there is a dimension brothers and sisters you will see things happen to men you now see that will surprise you i know this by the spirit one of the impartations that we are coming to receive on friday is this grace for financial exploits please believe it i'm not apologetic about it because we need it your heavenly father knows there are families that must come to just cry and say god if you leave us to ourselves we may not reach the end of this year i'm rounding up a precious woman one wonderful kaduna family that i love so much they left to church this morning while service was going on in this area thieves came and buckled their house because of the financial squalor you can imagine people now live and go for work they went to church they were praying whereas robbers buckled their house packed everything that can be carried pits whatever i mean carried them um, i don't know they didn't give me the details of what they carried they entered came and saw their house scattered because of the wickedness of satan let me tell you this a spiritual demarcation has been made over this ministry and everyone connected from this grace you are totally exempted from this financial wickedness it's no longer poverty it's warfare there is a spirit behind it to make sure believers are rubbish to become nonsense to make sure pastors become beggars to make sure nothing is discussed in church again no salvation message only money message to make sure that people never rise that the only thing that happens in church is money and raising seeds the spirit of poverty please i want you to come on friday with your heart open we are praying for the sick but some of this let's trust god to make this thing happen in our lives but you mark my word koinonia what is about to happen to men and women god has seen your heart you will see the sudden liftings of men by divine strategies i saw it in that vision people helping themselves and it's like a chain reaction within a short period of time rising in a way that is enviable he made this for our glory father we give you praise tonight we respect your authority in this house we respect what you are doing we take you seriously and we believe you thank you oh god for showing us tonight a system for accessing the deep things of god i pray oh god that you will grant us grace that as we pray this prayer we receive deep things from the kingdom and that grace be supplied to walk in the instructions thereof lord i am asking you to lift everyone lift everyone connected to this vision first lift us spiritually oh god 
let no one be weak in this place let no one be small in this place oh god let your sons and daughters be men and women of fire and insight and then i pray oh god that the things that pertain unto life you will give us the thing the issues of life may they be solved once and for all that we may have the time to serve you and declare your praises to the nations we thank you we receive it by faith and we declare that this is our experience in the name of jesus christ apostle i want to give my life to jesus christ keep standing everybody i love him with all my heart but seeing what he has done tonight it is a call for me to run to him you're here inside outside overflow one two three by the roadside online you are saying man of god i want to run to jesus i have seen that this is the way i want my life to be or you are here you are saying apostle i've handed my life to jesus but i want to rededicate my life i want to take him seriously because he is my life wherever you are please make sure you run here overflow outside overflow one and two you can come in join those inside overflow three for time's sake just walk to your projector stand please do this quickly wherever you are god bless you god bless you thank you for your courage my brother thank you my sister god bless you i see you coming make sure you don't sit back i love you jesus keep coming quickly i worship and adore you just want to tell you that i love you more than anything are you coming please make your way very quickly i love you jesus appreciate them as they come i worship and adore you I just want to tell you that i love you more than anything one more time i believe somebody still needs to come and join them i love you jesus i worship and adore you just want to tell you that i love you more than anything hallelujah those in front and those at overflow three and those online all of you please say this after me come join them darling quickly say Lord Jesus say it from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe you love me I believe you gave your heart your life to set me free tonight I receive of your life I receive righteousness I receive all that you have done for me and I declare that I am a child of God the life of God is in my spirit I declare that you are my Lord now and forever I declare that the spirit of the living God comes into my life tonight and he's with me forever thank you Jesus let me pray for you father thank you for these precious people they have come in honor of the call that you have made over their lives and destinies lord preserve them validate this declaration that they have made by faith by granting them access to the spirit of truth the one who can search the mind of the father i pray that you make their lives beautiful produce the garden of eden out of every wilderness in the name of jesus christ amen and amen now thank you so much gentlemen i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you please go ahead follow him appreciate them as they do so same thing for those at overflow three hallelujah praise the lord we bless you we bless you we join the angels we join the inhabitants of the heavens to bless the name of the lord thank you Lift your voice again in one minute and just cry out to God and say, Father, I have come for an encounter. Come to be transformed. One word from the Lord. 
that is understood and received can change your destiny forever. Jesus, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Let our hearts be open to receive everything that you have. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Greetings to all who are connected with us from around the world online. We honor you. We love you. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. Those outside, those inside, the Lord bless you. It's good to have everyone around again. For those coming for the first time, what a joy to have you in our midst. The Lord bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just um, reiterate a few things before we get into the teaching of the night. It never tires me to keep reminding us Please pay attention. And there is a reason why I do this all the time. Because um, the impact of a person, please listen. And you know, this is a school. So everything that is communicated can be applied in our lives, businesses, or whatever it is. It is very, listen, it is very important that whatever it is you find yourself doing, you make your assignment or you make if it is in business the products or the services very clear are we together um, in business we call it branding branding is a system where you connect your products with the psychology of the consumers so that every time they see your logo or whatever it is wherever are we together now they so whenever they have a need, they know where to find it. Now, the same principle applies in ministry. As a man of God, as a pastor, it is important that there is clarity over your assignment and what the people should expect every time they are within the proximity of your grace. Certain things should happen to them. And the assignment is upon every visionary leader to let the people know and you create that persuasion through repetition. So that everyone who, for instance, comes for koinonia, already registers in their heart that certain possibilities should be my experience. Are we together? If I, please help me, Jimmy, with this water. Watch this. This is Nestle, right? This is water. Look up, please. And if I remove, if I peel up what is here, there's no way that I would know whether this originally came from them or not. Is that true? Someone can fetch water from a well and put it in this bottle and sell it. So a system came up to standardize their product and they branded it by putting this. Are we together now? So every time you want Nestle water, when you pick it, you search for certain things. If you don't find it there, then it's not Nestle water. Are we together? They pay people millions to advertise in such a manner that they help you to know what to check out in a product to know whether it is fake or real. Are we together? Now, the reason why many listen and learn, I share my heart with you because um, we are largely young people and God is helping us to rise. And one of the reasons why many people, many churches don't grow many great people great businesses never rise is there is no clarity as to what their products are people cannot come to there's too much vagueness that you are a man of god does not mean you can deliver everything so there must be clarity excuse me of the dimension of the grace of god that is communicated to you so that those who need that grace will know where to go to are we together? When Benihin comes to Nigeria or wherever he goes to, 
when you are going for a Benihin crusade, you don't expect a relationship. You don't expect some of the... You go there on wheelchairs, angry, expecting that pain to leave. You expect an impartation. Are we together? His consistency in the spirit has branded that dimension of the dealings of God in him. When you go to God's servant, Bishop Oyedeko, you expect certain things to happen to you. Are we together? So, it is my assignment, among other things, to keep reminding us of what we represent to the body. So that every time you come or invite people to come, they come with their heart fixed to expect certain dimensions of God. This is how you know whether you belong here. This is how you know whether you need what is there. If I'm thirsty, I don't need a chemist to buy drugs. Do I? Now, that does not mean a chemist is bad. But with respect to my hunger, a chemist is not necessary. Are we together? So that when you know what stage and what level you are spiritually, you know what materials to listen to. You don't just carry everything spiritual and say, because I'm listening. You don't grow that way. It has to be specific. Imagine a student who goes to every faculty, just travel around and receives lecture at will. He's always in every lecture, but there is no direction. Are we together? Today, he feels like being in the faculty of medicine. Next, tomorrow, he's in accounting. And then... Again, he's in fine arts. You see him drawing, trying to construct a building. And that guy does it successfully for five years. Do you think he deserves a degree? No. He deserves congratulations for diligence. But not a degree. Because his pursuit is not specific. Are we together now? So the first thing I want to remind us of is what we really represent to the body. What, what God has gathered us here this training that we keep investing ourselves and committing ourselves to week after week, year after year, to what end? You are like a product that God is working on. You should have an idea of what you should be like when he is done with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that it will motivate you. It will encourage you. Whether it is through the rain, whether it is through the sun, you no longer with this understanding come to church as though you are doing maybe your colleague who invited you a favor or maybe because you are a worker that understanding guides you and it supplies strength even when you are weak you know that god is i'm, I'm, I'm on a project i will continue going when a lady goes to make her hair in the saloon you know she steps there and they show her different pictures and she sees what she wants to look like and says that's the style i want correct and she never asks how long will it take for this style to produce. She just knows that, do you have the money? Do you have the patience? Yes. She sits down and for hours she's frowning and sweating but determined. Are we together? You will meet her and ask her a question and say, ah, my sister, you are still here? I traveled to Sabo and I'm back. She says, I mean, that's, that's, that's the demand of the style. Correct? That's the demand of what? The style. At the end of it, by the time she's beautifully dressed, as soon as she steps out, a brother is seeing her, he's like, ah, you mean you are the one? You see, that is the end product. The brother never says, you mean you stayed this long? He does not care how long. All the brother is interested in is the end product. The generations are not waiting for our training. They are waiting for what we will be like. Nobody will forgive you for not healing the sick and say, I'm still on training. No. Whenever you approach them, they think you have finished. That means you must be diligent. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising people of power in this place. He won't stop. He won't stop till we lose just like him he won't stop no he won't stop till my life looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till i look just like him he won't stop he won't stop 
for you may weep, but he won't stop till you look just like him. And you may cry, but he won't stop till you look just like him. Please don't stop, please don't stop till we look just like you. Please don't stop, Lord, don't stop till my life is like you. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, never allow my tears stop you from going on with the training. The truths that I may hear me challenge me, but I refuse to stop. Lift your voice and pray. There is a generation that is depending on my diligence. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. That your profiting, your profiting, your profiting will appear unto all. Believe me, this word of God works. It may take time, but you will look like him. It may take time, but when he's done with you, he brings beauty and glory out of your life. Your life becomes nothing short of an awesome wonder. You may not look like it now. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be like. Just give him time. Be patient with God. It, everything of value takes time. Everything of value takes time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So there are certain things we must always expect here. Number one, encounters. Koinonia has been designed by God our ministry to the body is to create a platform for people to have dramatic encounters with God. An encounter is an experience that makes a person real. When you meet me, you can say you have had an encounter because in meeting me, you will have the opportunity to have a closer look. You will talk with me. You will be able to interact with me. You will be able to understand my ideology. This is what an encounter is. So through the, the ministrations, through the worship, through the testimonies, and everything that we do, we seek to stimulate an atmosphere that brings encounters in the lives of people. It is my personal opinion that you are not a Christian if you have not encountered God. It doesn't matter how long you have been to church if you have not had a personal encounter. We used to say it before. Now preachers don't say it. They just say, do you know God? And we know that God means everything to people. God is a bottle of minerals somewhere. God is a shrine somewhere. An encounter. They call it a personal encounter. You can have a corporate encounter. But everyone needs a personal encounter. An experience that makes Jesus real to you. An experience that makes the life of God real to you. There's no hope of turning back after an encounter. It's not about trying. It is impossible to want to opt to go back. An encounter. Very important. Hallelujah. Number two. The second thing that we represent to the body is a platform where an understanding of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom is received. It is important to know that God has committed unto us the message of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom is the understanding of the principles of the kingdom that seeks to reveal to the believer his responsibility, the part he has to play as far as experientially enthroning Lord is concerned and then extending the influence of his reign. We have that assignment to be able to make men see, to bring people to an understanding where they understand that um, if we are to command victory in life, it will be on the strength of the mysteries, the principles of the kingdom. So this is a place of understanding. 
That's why you never hear people tell you oh, stories, stories here and there. We are concerned about you having the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. That is the only basis for a victorious life. Emotions don't produce victory. Listen, listen. Emotions don't produce victory. There are so many emotional things happening in the body of Christ. People cry, they jump, and, and, and I'm not against all these things except for the fact that if they do not have life applicable kingdom founded principles, they are not going to produce results in the lives of people. And you know, the system of God is such that after a period of God investing in your life, you will expect fruits. He came and saw the fig tree and cursed it. Why? Because it could not produce. So if you claim to have been around the things of God at a point in your life, there should be evidences. Evidences. Something should start working. Everything cannot go bad. If everything is bad in your life, then something must be wrong. And you must seek to find out, not look for who to blame. You see that? Because that's what we do. We look for someone to blame. We look for demons to blame. And sometimes they are guilty, but not all the time. We look for parents to blame. We look for government to blame. In this place, we cultivate the spirit of responsibility. That if anything will ever change in your life, it's up to God and you. Not God alone, not you alone. So koinonia comes as the word that defines that experience. Partnership. It takes partnership between God and man for anything notable to happen. We're very responsible people. We believe that my destiny and your destiny is not just in the hands of God to decide. Uh -uh. We have a role to play and that our assignment as individuals and as a people is to make sure that we are hands on, on our own part of the partnership. Because the problem is usually from us, never from him. You've been faithful, Lord, through the ages past, always faithful. That is why your name is forever. That means if my life is not moving forward, listen, if my life is not moving forward, I will be stupid to blame God. Are we together? I must understand that God, his name is faithful. It's not an attribute he has. The Bible calls him in Revelations faithful and true. There is no shadow of turning in him. So if anything is wrong in my life, things are not working. I'm not reflecting the reality of the word of God. I must with all meekness take responsibility and say, look, there is something I do not know or there is something I have not understood. There is something I have not believed. The moment you assume the position of responsibility, you are ready for divine help. God will never come and stretch his hands towards a people who are not ready to take responsibility. Are we together? The third thing that God has anointed and assigned us to do is the ministry of signs and wonders. Listen, you must understand that the ministry of signs and wonders is way beyond the ministry of miracles. The ministry of miracles is largely limited to bodies and all of the signs and wonders um, are supernatural occurrences that challenge the belief systems of men and cause them to see the sovereignty of God displayed in the midst of the people. That's why you see certain things. They are not necessarily miracles. You understand? Someone can be shouting outside. I can tell you two people are going to shout right now. That's not a miracle. That's a sign and a wonder. Are we together now? Yeah. All of a sudden, supernatural occurrences begin to happen. All kinds of strange demonstrations of the spirit. I can be saying God is giving you speed and then you see people start running physically. Why are they acting out those things? It's a ministry of signs and wonders. When you understand this, when you bring someone for the first time and the person is, are you sure this guy is not a herbalist? You tell him, no, 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 no. This is part of the call. There is an anointing for signs and wonders. Very few people on earth have it. Many people have the anointing for miracles. But not signs and wonders. He says, I will show signs in the heavens and wonders blood fire and smoke these are three mysteries i will show signs in the heaven prophet joel told us that is part of what comes with the outpouring of the spirit 
So aside from healing miracles, aside from deliverances and all of that, signs and wonders. Meaning that when you come for koinonia, you expect the limitless dimensions of the Holy Spirit demonstrated without restraint. Anything can happen. I can be talking and all of a sudden someone is shouting and if you do not know that is part of the package here, you may be afraid. But when you know, when you hear someone shouting, instead of looking and saying, I hope this guy is not lying, you just say, God is here and he's here for me too. You see that? Yeah. Very important. When you understand these things, there are other auxiliary assignments, of course, the blessings of the kingdom, financial prosperity, the wealth of the kingdom, and so on and so forth. Everything God has sent me to do, everything God has sent us as a ministry to do, we are unapologetic about it. Why am I saying this? That means if I claim to be sent by God, and if I claim to be teaching you, and you are participating in what I am saying, it means if you are not changing to become what I claim God has asked me to do, something about my call and election must be questionable. If I claim God has called me to heal the sick and I pray for 100 people and not one person gets healed, I need to go back to God and say, Lord, something is wrong somewhere. Transformed lives are the, like the trophies. The Bible calls them the seals of apostleship. Right? So that you look at your life and say, my God, look at what God has done in my life. I came and I met Jesus. My life has changed. So he releases the anointing that is responsible to produce that result. That's why many of us are gathered. That's why the testimonies are here. And tonight will be no different in the name of Jesus. You will always learn something when you come to the presence of God. I'm, I'm, the goal here is not to make you aware. You must understand that beyond the words you are hearing, there is an anointing that backs it up. That anointing is what empowers you to perform. Otherwise, all I'm giving you is a lecture. It's an intelligent lecture. Because some of the things that I'm communicating, some of them are products of researches. The research does not have an anointing in itself. It just has information. But when... That research is taken in the place of prayer. Something comes upon it. It's no longer a lecture note. Are you seeing now? So when I'm speaking to you ordinarily, you would not have believed what I'm saying. But there is an anointing upon it that compels you not only to believe, but receive the grace and you will stand up and receive and reproduce the result. Listen, let me tell you. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The ministry of transformation is a system you must understand. If you are in this place and you are called into ministry, whether you have started or not, pay attention. Get ready for empty pews if you don't understand the technology that transforms men. People will hype you and you will be excited for a few months waiting for the next person who will open church near you and they will all move there and leave you because they are tired of your stillness. There's got to be something that brings freshness to people. Are we together now? When a businessman comes to Koinonia, he must find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister to him. When a student comes, he must find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister. So, when our little children, our little ones, as small as they are, they must be able to find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister to them. Failure to do that, we are not in ministry. We are just acting on stage. Hallelujah. And this comes with a price. Prayer is only one of the price. It comes with diligence. That's why I challenge a lot of people, especially those who want to go into ministry. You know, most people think ministry is a lazy man's work. When you don't get a job, you know, they didn't give you employment all around, you just quietly go and start ministry. No, ministry is not for lazy people. Ministry is for diligent people. The, the hours it takes to prepare just a simple message that you deliver in, 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 in one hour or so. And now we, we live in a, a technology-driven society. You mention one Greek word, you are lying about it, someone is checking right away and telling his name. He said, no, no, no. It was 1997, this word. It was a mistake. He will even say the article where you got it wrong. It takes intelligence, not just spirituality. You should not just say something. You must have something to say. 
Everybody is saying something. People don't listen to talkatives again. So on one side, you are contending for the power, the grace, and the anointing. But on the other side, you must give people information that is worth their time. Nobody has time to waste listening to junks and nonsense. You can impress yourself as a man of God and flatter yourself together with your workers. And then people just watch you and pity you for a few months. And finally reveal to you how much you are not blessing them by their absence in your meeting. You should miss koinonia and feel it. That's a sign that you are receiving something. That if for any reason, because of your busy schedule or travel or trip or whatever, you miss koinonia. There are thousands of people, close to 100,000 people, connecting from different parts of the world. Online, right now, listening to me as I'm speaking. Why? Some of them are unable to make it. That's a blessing. The moment our teaching is uploaded online, in 24 hours, there's 1 million downloads. In 24 hours, transformation. Somebody somewhere is depending on that truth. Are we together now? I'd like you to pray just one prayer before I continue. And say, Lord, make my life valuable. Let me be a blessing. Open your mouth and pray, please. You brought me to the earth for a reason. Lord, I don't want to live a mediocre life. The dimension of diligence it will take. The dimension of consistency it will take. To emerge triumphant. Grant me the grace. Go ahead and pray. Challenge laziness. Challenge unseriousness. Challenge mediocrity. Challenge playing around and wasting your time. The labor dimension of a successful life. The labor dimension of an impactful life. You must cry for it from heaven. I live to praise your name. I have no fear. Of what tomorrow brings I live I live To praise your name And I have no fear Of what tomorrow brings I live I live I live I live To praise your name I have no fear Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is ministering one more prayer point for me that we will pray. I'd like you to pray for the next one minute with all your heart and say, Lord, there is a faulty understanding in my life that is keeping me down, that is limiting the ministry of the Holy Spirit in my life. It may have come through culture. It may have come through my pain. I cry to the heavens. Give me a visitation. I declare my disloyalty to any mindset. I declare my disloyalty to any ideology, any thinking that is not consistent with the word of God, any thinking that is not consistent with the ways of the kingdom, any thought pattern that is not grounded and rooted upon the working knowledge of the word. No matter how long I have sustained that knowledge, lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. I may be Igbo, I may be Yoruba, I may be Hausa, I may be whatever nation, whatever locality around the world. I insist in the name of Jesus that my mind conforms to the patterns of the kingdom. There's so much the Holy Spirit wants to do in and through my life. Something about my life is the reason why I'm poor. Something about my, my life, my mindset is the reason why the anointing cannot flow freely. There's a reason why my church is not growing. There's a reason why my life is grounded. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. No blaming parents. No blaming government. No blaming neighbors. No blaming anyone. I take full responsibility over my destiny. And I declare my willingness to change. 
that as the word of God comes I receive it I don't argue with what works hallelujah please sit down the Bible says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise I say it all the time this thing we are trying to get to has been is a destination that someone is currently there your future is someone's present already the dimension you seek to enter in the anointing there is a living person on earth walking in it though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before I like this part of this song that's the only part I'm interested in we may be few who are serious about this but the Bible says I mean Don Moen really not the Bible it says we are surrounded no no in fact the Bible even says it it says we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses witnesses men who have done it before they grew up from poor families and they caused them that you will not make it but they accessed a mystery and they rose beyond that dimension they went to school with no one to pay their school fees only a box but a dimension of God bailed them out time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak he said men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness it's not new you are not the first to do it women who were barren declared that they did not have womb but they accessed a mystery in the kingdom that gave them womb and they gave birth to twins and triplets you are not the first don't mourn as if there is no hope there is hope but the hope is in a dimension of the word of God you catch not every part of the word of God is responsible for your answer your answer is somewhere. Your assignment is to search it out or listen to those who have searched it out. You don't argue when you don't yet have results. It's pride. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, you only criticize a man who you have done twice what he has not done once. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh, Lord, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh, for my life and destiny. I hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, no matter what I'm going through today, Lord, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, sing it with faith in your heart. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh. Yahweh. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future an unexpected end surely said there is an end and an expectation someone needs to prophesy this there is an end this hunger will not be forever i i no no i may not have an anointing now but there is an end there is a day i will access a deep fountain of grace that the nations will see the hand of god upon my life my child may not be making it now but i tell you brothers and sisters there is an end prophesy it in one minute I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Pray, my hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, I look to Yahweh. My eyes are upon you, Jesus. They may criticize you, but fix your eyes on Jesus. They may not understand why you are this passionate. Fix your eyes, not on the mockers fix your eyes not on the problem fix your eyes not on the limitation it says looking up to Jesus the author and the finisher come on sing we look to Yahweh Yahweh our 
hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. Please sit down. This is already a word for someone tonight. Even before we start. Though weeping endures for a night. My Bible, your Bible says joy comes. Don't allow little hindrances on your part of greatness. Make it look as if God lied. You have been tithing, you've not seen anything. You've been praying, there's no grace that is at work. I tell you, something is happening in the realm of the spirit. He said, ye who have continued with me. One day it will be like a dream. You will come out of your house in the morning and step into a dimension that you will never, never, never recover from. Listen, sit down. Let me tell you a little story. Years ago, I used to go in the night. I tell you, I feel such a strong anointing. Strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's what happens when we begin to teach truth. He's called the spirit of truth. So he comes to pack the truth that you are receiving. Every time the truth comes, it comes like an arrow. It comes upon your spirit man. And then you receive it. Capacity is given to you to rise in the spirit. Listen, listen. Years ago, every night, I would just go and pray. Pray in the spirit for hours and study and return back. No anointing know nothing then there was no access to the privileges that people had are we together now that time if someone fell under the anointing you would take him to the hospital very few people understood the move of the spirit i would go and pray in tongues and sometimes two three hours prayer will turn into a vigil and i'll finish and carry my bible broke but in the spirit never understood the things of god but in the spirit. Controversial and mysterious, but in the spirit. And I continued there. And God told me, he said, son, one day, men will look at you and think you are a God. I remember God told me that thing. Just continue. Sometimes with no food, I had not eaten anything. Don't think I was born inside an aircraft. No, sir. He said, for we do not. Let me tell you one of the symbols of the apostolic ministry. God will pass you through almost every problem you are anointed to solve. That is the only way the anointing comes. An apostle is not an evangelist. No. That furnace of affliction, you must pass through it. Is, is what creates the scar. He said, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of Christ. Let no man trouble me. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. For time. Lord, we look to Yahweh. For the last time now. Please sit down if you can pick something to write. Let's just discuss a few things so that we can pray. When God is done with you, brothers and sisters, except you choose, see, listen, look at me. Let me teach you something. When you are being mentored and trained, don't change the equation you are giving. You will not be successful that way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't tamper with the equation you are giving. Be foolish enough to walk with it and watch the wonder it will make out of your life. Jesus said the kingdom is for children because if you tell a child, jump. If a Jimmy tells his daughter, get up and fly down, she would do it without thinking. Sometimes this hour, this claim that we have grown is the reason why we never walk with God. 
the simplicity of spiritual things. There are so many people who want the anointing but will never sit down to learn how it comes. You tell them this is how it comes, they will change the equation somewhere and never get it. And stay forever not getting it. Lord Jesus, let this place remain a place of transformation. We will be wicked people if we gather your people here and waste their time and not bless them. Coming here alone is a sacrifice. You don't want to know how many spirits try to stop you to come for every meeting. That you can leave your house and come here is a sign that victory started, not that victory is starting. Sir, please stand up. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Yes. The Lord is healing you. You are sick. What's wrong with you? I'm seeing your legs. You stand a little on the legs. There's pain. Come. That devil will leave you now. Hallelujah. 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 I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a man that the devil wants to inflict with paralysis, like complete stroke. Sir? It was on 1st January 9th. Hold on, please. Saturday, very early, I had to rise from the village back to where I'm staying. Started. Okay. Started. When was that? First January. That is Sunday. First morning. January. Yes. That's when this happened. Yes. My I God. rushed from the village to, to Abuja. That's no. I'm seeing you go for a meeting in a village or something. And while you were on your way, I'm seeing something leaving you from there. This is where this came. It is, uh, we are going to look for a land. Somebody is taking the land. That's what I'm saying. saying. In a village. Yes. From there you went to Abuja. That's where the problem came from. Sir, this is not leg problem. This is witchcraft. You understand? No matter what kind of drug you take, you find out that it will not relieve you. I hope you are not embarrassed, sir. Well, I'm tired of the drugs. That's why I left Abuja yesterday for the here. Yeah. You came from Abuja? Yes. Do you think you will go back the same? Do you think it's fair if you go back the same? No. Do you think I will be a good man of God if you go back the same? Well, you are a man of God, sir. Now think about this. This man left Abuja and came. Now we have, we have, we have made all kinds of noise. We are men of God. You see the danger of not preparing? You come and stand and brag around and tell people you are hearing the voice of God and here is someone left Abuja and came. Why should he not go to a herbalist if he cannot be healed? No, 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 no. I said it, if I were not a preacher, I would not go to a herbalist in the secret. I would go in the open and carry the charm and come for fellowship and sit down in front let a man of God look at me if you criticize me I say I agree I'm guilty but he, I hand over the charm to you hold it and heal me if you cannot shut your mouth you see that's why you need an encounter you don't talk like this without an encounter you will make a fool of yourself no, sir sir Jesus will heal you. This is called koinonia. Hold my hand, sir. <sighs> my God. Jesus, I cause this now. Right now. Out! Just guide him. Out! I command in the name of Jesus. May the hand of the Lord touch you right now. Sir, look at me. Lift one leg. Go ahead. Lift it. 
Just look at me. Forget about the leg. Lift your leg. Are you feeling any pain there now? Huh? You're seeing improvement. Yes. Right there. Look at this. Give Jesus praise. Come up. Walk. Come. Lift it. Do what you couldn't do. Can you jump? Try. Look at this. In the name of Jesus, that anointing is upon you. Never be the same. Not only this, but the Lord is restoring your finances. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Are you together with that woman? I'm seeing life leaving you. That's your wife. Wife, come. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. I'm looking at this woman in the spirit and I'm seeing a woman crying and saying, Lord, when will you visit us? Madam, please don't cry. Jesus is in this place. What is this? Children. Who is a reverend? You lost your child. Who is a reverend? My God. It's all right. The Lord is restoring this family. Believe me when I say this. Mama, don't cry. Jesus is Lord. Daddy, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, there is a grace and anointing in this place to wipe tears. It says to comfort they that mourn in Zion. There are people who are mourning, although they are in Zion. Comfort those that mourn in Zion. Is that not what the Bible says we should do? We declare comfort to you right now. Stretch your hands towards this dear family and pray in one minute. Koinonia, pray. We bring your challenge face to face with the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we bring it face to face with the anointing. The same God that has touched you now. The same God touching mommy. Touching all the children. Hallelujah. Sir, I prophesy to you that after today's meeting, from as early as tomorrow, write it down, you will begin to hear dramatic testimonies in your life. Listen, you see, listen, I don't have a prophetic office. My prophetic dimension is creative. I will not just reveal. It makes it happen. You see that? There is, there is, the revelatory dimension of the prophetic where you access what will happen and inform them so that you give them hope but the creative dimension of God is your word is what makes it happen so in the name of Jesus whether or not that possibility was in your future I put it there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ God bless you sir God bless you man thank you Stephen, Stephen, who is Stephen? My God, this is what happens now. Stephen, I'm hearing a name, Stephen. Stephen, if that is your name, if you're inside or outside, Stephen, I just want to speak to that person, Stephen. Your name is Stephen? My dad. My brother, look at me. God is taking the load on your head right now. I saw you coming in. I'm seeing load that is bigger than you. What do I carry all this kind of load? Huh? Your life needs a real miracle. Almost everything about your life needs a miracle. And I'm going to pray for you. Look at me, um, gentleman. I have to pray for you because I'm seeing the devil wants to put sickness in your body. And I have to pray for you. The devil wants to put sickness in your body and I'll pray for you. We'll hurry up. Sorry, I hope I'm not wasting your time. Praise the Lord.
I'm seeing two ladies. The anointing of the Spirit will come on them and 19 days at a stretch, the families will have breakthroughs. 19 days at a stretch. That's what the Lord is revealing to me. 19 days. 19 days 19 days at a stretch by the spirit let it be according to the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus my brother I want to pray for you the Lord wants to take this load away from your life you believe that hold my hands Jesus please let your grace walk upon his life I set you free right now in the name of Jesus. Sickness leaves your body. You have no business with infirmity. I curse it in your life in the name of Jesus. My brother, God wants to help you, but there is a lot of disorganization in your life. You need a lot of order. Huh? You need a lot of order in your life. God is helping you in the name of Jesus. I'm hearing the prayer of someone's mother in my ears. And that prayer will be answered now with the anointing touching that person. Right as I'm speaking now, the mother of that person is praying. Let there be breakthroughs, oh God. Breakthroughs. 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 Set families free. Bless them by your spirit. Bless them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come promise. God is giving you wisdom. A new dimension of wisdom. That's what God is giving you. Fresh wisdom. You need it for this season. The Lord is giving you wisdom. Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Can you just allow me flow as the Holy Spirit is flowing? Is that alright? Is that alright? So that you don't feel... Sometimes God, somebody at the back, the ushering stand, the power of God is touching that person right now. Someone right at the back, the ushering stand. And the Lord is saying it is over. This is the prophetic word. It is over. It is over. It is over. I'm prophesying to 11 people. The mountain that stands before you. The mountain that stands. 11 people. 11 people. No, no, as I speak, the power of God will confirm it. The mountain that stands before you, my God says I should tell you to be swallowed up. Swallowed up. Swallowed up. Swallowed up. Kaparatokata. I place the word of God upon this. The mountain that stands before you is swallowed up in the name of Jesus. The mountain that stands before you is swallowed up by the anointing of the Spirit. Pay attention when you receive from God and expect to testify. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is visiting someone in the worship team. I hear laughter, laughter, laughter. That's what I hear in my spirit. Laughter. I place the word of God upon this. Laughter. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. The Lord is ministering to me. Someone radical breakthrough and transformation is coming upon someone in the worship team. Laughter. That's what the spirit of God is ministering to me. Ministering to me. Ministering to me. The lady standing near you. The anointing of the spirit is upon her. It's a new chapter in your life. That's what the Spirit of God says. A new chapter in your life. New chapter in your life. The old is gone. The old is gone. The old is gone. The old is gone. Behold, I make all things new. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I'm seeing one of the usher ladies climbing a ladder in the spirit. I don't know who, but I'm seeing one of the ladies, you are an usher, climbing a ladder in the spirit. And the Lord says, I should prophesy it. You are an usher, I know you are walking. 
but this miracle is for you climbing a ladder in the realm of the spirit a course marriage course is being broken in two families two families specifically now is a course is a course is a course shabata lakata Brata sebe teke nekataya. Break that course. Break that course. There are two ladies here. One is outside. You've been having irregular menstruation. This is, this is a very dangerous situation. And the Lord is touching that person. One is outside. And the Lord is setting that person free now. Now from that devilish thing. It must go now. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Paul said and when I came to you. I did not come with the excellency of speech. People are tired of all these things. People need real breakthroughs in their lives. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power to break every chain. just speak to one more family and then we'll sit down. There is an Igbo lady or an Igbo family from Abia State. God is setting them free right now. I'm seeing it in the realm of the spirit. Abia State and the Lord is saying it's time for the captivity of that family to be rolled away. It's time for the captivity of that person. Lord I don't know who that person is but I stretch my hands right now and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus from Abia that's what the spirit of God is ministering to me Lord whether online whether here wherever it is I pray that your power will break that family free from the shackles of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ there's someone following online from Joss from Joss you have an ear problem and the Lord is setting you free right now from Joss you have an ear problem in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Sit down. God bless you. A few minutes. Let's just touch on something tonight. Jesus. Please take something to write. And um, let me just teach briefly. Our time is gone. I love it when the Holy Spirit steps in to do these things. Look at me. Do you know why many of us may never walk in these dimensions? The motif of our heart is to create an impression where people think this is an anointed man. If that is your motive, God will never trust you with this kind of power. You will destroy people with it. Are we together? Most people don't know that the anointing of the Spirit can kill the vessel carrying it. The anointing is like electricity. The same electricity that gives light can shock someone to death. Are we together now? When God anoints you, the standards become higher of his dealings with you. Someone can do something else and go scot free. But for you, just because Moses was angry, God said you are not entering the promised land. Yet the people who grumbled entered. So, be careful when you just say give me an anointing there, there are rules there is there is a system with which you work with this thing pride a lot of us here if God should trust us with this kind of grace people are in trouble especially when you enter a meeting where someone has doubted you for a long time you say let me let, he's, he's the one first let me release that anointing on the doubter I'm, I'm rubbish him then he will use that as a lesson 
and know that I am Apostle Joshua Selman and God says no way my, the death of my son is too expensive for that nonsense I hear the chains falling no I'm not singing I'm prophesying that's what I'm hearing you will see it happen now his word will never go for it. Don't mind me. Just allow me to do my madness. I hear the chains fall. Literally. I'm hearing physical chains. I hear the chains. I hear the chains. Lord, let them fall from the life of me. That's what the anointing was designed to do. sit down. I want to teach you a very big secret tonight. Philippians chapter 2 the Lordship of Christ Philippians chapter 2 the Lordship of Christ Esther Yahi, the Lord is saying I am helping you. I'm bringing you help I'm bringing you help where your strength has failed, I am helping you that's what the Lord is saying what your parents could not do I am helping you I am helping you Philippians chapter 2 the Lordship of Christ what I want to teach you tonight is a very powerful secret it's one of the mysteries that control walking in spiritual power so I want you to pay attention to it hallelujah now there are there are different dimensions of God as revealed in scripture. Please follow me. Different dimensions of God as revealed in scripture. And when a believer comes to Jesus Christ, when you come to what we call surrender your heart to him, it is important for us to understand what dimension of God is revealed. Are we together now? Every dimension of Jesus in the Bible is responsible for certain outcomes of a believer's life the names of God all through the Bible represent different dimensions of him that were encountered by different people so when they met the God that provides they called him Jairah are we together when they met a God who could override people's wrongs was merciful and compassionate they called him Rapha or Rapheka are we together now? So the names of God defined the dimensions of his dealings and his operation with people. Now, when you come to Jesus, listen carefully. When you come to Jesus as a sinner, you hear an altar call or the spirit of God convicts you, right? The Bible says he will convict the, the world of three things, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the unbeliever. The ministry of conviction bringing him to a point where he will see his need the dimension of God that is revealed at salvation is Jesus our savior it is important you understand that the saving dimension of Jesus when you when you preach Jesus as savior you reveal the love of God expressed to man through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Listen, listen. Herein is the grace of God revealed. The Bible says that we are saved by that grace. Are we together now? So, when you reveal Jesus as Savior, is the dimension of God revealed as Father, desiring to bring alienated sons and daughters who have been alienated, the Bible says, from the commonwealth of Israel. And he brings that through the substitutionary sacrifice. The atoning sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus, our Savior. Dying on the cross for your sin and my sin to fulfill the law that says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Are we together now? So when you receive Jesus as Savior, and it's important, you know, many believers doubt their salvation. And the reason why they doubt their salvation is they do not know what the condition for a believer to be saved is. There's something they used to teach us called assurance of salvation. Assurance of salvation is not the same thing as salvation. 
assurance of salvation is the basis upon which your salvation lies so you know it and then you can know whether or not you are saved and in Christ the Bible gives us very clear parameters to know that a person is saved are we together now the Bible says for instance in Romans chapter 10 when you read from verse 8 to 10 the Bible says who shall ascend to the heavens and so on and so forth he said but the word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart even the word of faith that we preach that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him so there are several things that must be believed by the believer those of us who are of the Anglican background there's something that they call Anglican and I think part of Catholic the Apostles Creed the Apostles Creed is a compendium of the revelation of Jesus as Savior chanted in a poem right so you say the things you believe that makes you a Christian right so you start I believe in God the Father and Jesus his Holy Son so on and so forth you know born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was dead and crucified buried he rose again on the third day not the fourth day it's important to believe exactly what the bible says there are people who believe jesus rose up on the seventh day you are wrong you are still not saved jesus did not because he the spirit of truth cannot be administered with a lie it has to be true are you getting what i'm saying now very important there are many things about the christian faith that becomes a foundation if you do not believe in the virgin birth you are not a christian i look forward to times when i begin to write books there are many truths that must be taught the body of christ the virgin birth of jesus is important the virgin birth of jesus is the only basis that authenticates his divinity that means that mary had jesus without the assistance of a man otherwise he could not have been divine so the virgin birth is not just proving that the lady who carried Jesus kept herself until Jesus came. It's more than that. It's more than that. You must believe that Jesus became a man and walked on the earth. The earthly ministry of Jesus is part of the basis. Because the Bible tells us he became a man. That is the only reason why you should believe that he's a high priest who has been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Are we together now? Yeah. You must believe in the fact that he was sinless. Now, this is the part people don't believe. If you don't believe that Jesus was sinless while he walked upon the earth, it's a terrible thing. There are all kinds of theologies going around saying, no, no look, um, he, it's impossible. He was a man with flesh and blood. 100% man. It's important for us to, no, 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 the Bible tells us and we trust the word of God. We were not there, but we believe in the integrity of the word because the Bible says holy men wrote as they were moved of the spirit and the spirit of God is the spirit of truth, meaning he cannot lie. It's not that he does not lie, he cannot lie. Are we together? This is the confidence upon which our faith is grounded on. And you must believe he did not die on the road. Jesus did not die by car accident. How he died matters to your salvation. Right? The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How did that happen? For it is written, according to the Mosaic law, cursed is every man that hangs on the tree. The man who dies from starvation is not cursed. He just died. So if Jesus died without dying on the tree, he could not be a curse for man cost is he that hanged on the tree right that the blessings of abraham what is the blessings of abraham not car not money justification by faith that's what the bible calls the blessings of abraham the blessings of abraham is different from the blessing there are two different things the blessing of abraham is justification by faith god preached the gospel to abraham right that's what apostle peter taught us and abraham believed god and it was credited unto him for righteousness so we like faithful abraham partake of that blessing by giving an opportunity to believe god and receive that credit of righteousness that's the blessing of abraham so that we are justified by faith and then it gives us access to receive the promise of the spirit through faith galatians chapter 3 is what teaches us that so it is important that we understand that Jesus as Savior 
talks about the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Now listen please. There is nothing that any man can do to be saved. No, 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 no. By, by that I mean there, there is no contribution. There is a participation but there is no contribution. Your participation is to receive by faith. That's the only thing. But you do not have a contribution when Jesus is revealed as Savior. The moment Jesus is revealed as Savior, he, the love of God is revealed unassisted. Unassisted. The substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. That's the apex of the demonstration of the love and the grace of God. Behold, what manner of love, the Bible says, the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called. That's the process. Are we together? Are you following me now? I'm taking our time to give us this basis so that it will strengthen our understanding. There is no man, there is no good works of any man that can be the basis upon which your salvation, no, 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 it's, it's impossible. I cannot be saved on the grounds of my works. I cannot be saved on grounds of things that I have done. No. Every time you look up to what you have done to be saved, you are out of the grace of God. But the moment you are saved, not walking the works of kingdom is the abuse of that grace. You see it now. Before you are saved, you only receive. After you are saved, you are empowered. The dimension of grace upon you no longer just becomes receiving. It becomes an empowerment to do. I must walk the works of him that sent me. Now, this is the balance we must bring over the grace message. There are two dimensions. There is the grace that appears as God's mercy given to man simply because of our helplessness to be able to attain that position of righteousness. The very nature of God. But now, having obtained that righteousness, we are further empowered by the ministry of the Spirit to begin to produce what the Bible calls the fruits of righteousness. Are we together? But that's not where I'm going tonight. There is a dimension of Jesus Christ that many people have not come into terms with. It has not been a revelation to them. And that's why they don't walk in power. That's why they cannot walk in certain dimensions. It's called the Lordship of Christ. It's one of the, it's one of the, the pillars of the Christian faith. You cannot claim you are a Christian and not acknowledge the Lordship of Christ. Philippians chapter 2, please from verse 5. Let this mind, he says, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So the word mind there means an understanding. There is an understanding that must be in you. Next verse says, though, who, although, being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. 7 says, but he made himself of no reputation and he took upon himself the form of a servant and was in the likeness of men. Eight, and being found in the fashion of man he humbled himself you see that follow the progression and was obedient unto death mark that obedient unto death obedient even to the point of death obedient with no resistance we are studying the servanthood of Jesus now the hallmark of his servanthood was what obedience that costed him his life right then he says, even death on the cross. Verse 9. Wherefore, on the strength of his obedience unto death, although being God, God had so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. Next verse. It says, that at the name of Jesus, not necessarily the mention of it. It's not the mention of it. That at the name of Jesus, every knee, should bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and of things under the earth verse 11 and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is what the name that was given to him we have discussed this in koinonia the name is not Jesus I hope you know this the name that was given to him is not Jesus Jesus was the name his mother gave him when they gave birth to him correct Christ was the name he assumed when he became full of the spirit but Lord was conferred upon him that's the name the name is not Jesus the name is Lord that confessed that Jesus 
who became the Christ in his earthly walk is now Lord. Are you seeing that now? To the glory of God the Father. So the Lordship of Christ is very important. Write this down please. There are a number of Hebrew words that are translated Lord. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to play around with Hebrew and Greek words, but just a few of them. There is Jehovah, right? Jehovah is translated Lord in capital letter. It was his name revealed to, to the Jews as the God of the Hebrews. But there is Adon, from where we get the word Adonai, right? Is translated Lord. Lord. The Greek word is curious. Don't, don't, don't worry, I'm just giving you a theological background of the word Lord. And what that means is sovereign controller. Listen please. It means master. It means owner. But it also means sovereign controller. It gives you a picture of one who either by his own strength or by your permission has unrestrained access to everything about your life. Are you getting the idea now? Either by his own strength, so I can come into someone's house and push the door by my strength. With respect to that combat, I am Lord because I push the door. Are we together? Or the person can open the door and welcome me. I am still Lord. So when the Bible gives the idea of Lordship, it talks of ownership, it talks of sovereign power, it talks of dominion, but it also talks of unrestrained access. Are we together? So Jesus being Lord is a revelation of one who has absolute control. This dimension of the Lordship of Jesus has not been experienced in many believers. Listen. Did you know that you can have a revelation of Jesus as Savior and yet not have a revelation of Him as Lord? When you have a revelation of Jesus as Lord, it will change everything in your life as we are going to see shortly. The Lordship of Jesus is the dominion of His person over every aspect of your life. And there is a law in the realm of the Spirit. Your degree of submission to authority is your degree of dominion. Listen, listen. The centurion came to Jesus and he said, you know, this and that, my son is ill and please, I want, you know, Jesus said, okay, you are a captain in the army. Let me respect you and come to your house. And he shocked Jesus with a revelation. He said, no, 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 no. You don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only. For I am a man under authority, the authority of the Roman government. So my strength comes with my submission to that authority. And because I am under authority, I tell one, go and he must go. Come and he must come. So he said, Jesus, I know that you are not here by yourself. You too, you are under an authority. And Jesus said, I have not found such faith, such understanding. That a man knows the relationship between submission and power. In fact, here's how Apostle James puts it. He says, submit yourself to the mighty hand of God. Then, he says, resist the devil and he will, he will not flee because of your ability to resist him. He will flee because of the authority that backs you while you are resisting. So, your own power is derived from your authority. Is the Greek word exousia. The capacity to legislate on behalf of one on the strength of your, co your connection. Are we together now? The best description of that ability is marriage. So if a man is married with his wife, if the man is not around, the wife can safely, if he's a responsible man, the wife can safely act in the stead of the man. Is that true? Yeah. So Jesus gives his bride, the church, the unrestrained ability to demonstrate the reality of his person on earth. But there is a condition. The condition is that like a faithful woman, only becomes a faithful woman on the strength of her submission to her husband. Is that not true? The Bible says, wives, do what? Submit yourselves. So the church that is now the wife of the Lord Jesus, the bride of Christ, derives her power by submitting. The revelation of the Lordship of Jesus is why demons eat up people cheaply. Why principalities and powers destroy people. 
Because when they come, they see that you have believed in the substitutionary power of Jesus, but you have not believed in his life gaining dominance over you. Write this down. The dominion of the word in us is the clearest measure of the lordship of Christ in you. The dominion of the word of God Dominion means the degree to which your life is a reflection of obedience to the word. The dominion of the word in us is the clearest measure of the lordship of Christ. So if you say Jesus is lord of my life, all I need to do is to see to what degree your life confirms to the word. And then I know whether or not he is lord over your life. Because that Jesus we speak about is the living logos. John 1 verse 1. The word of God. Jesus gave us a mysterious statement. Say, how can you believe God whom you have not seen when you cannot believe your brother? So if you cannot believe the word of God written, you will be a liar to claim you believe God. The Bible already said that God you believe inspired men to write this. If you do not believe scripture, then it means you are not a believer. Listen, the dominion, by dominion, the unrestrained access that you have given the word of God to find expression in your life is the clearest measure. Look at me. Jesus being Lord in our lives is not something that is just, it's not a lip service. Your life must demonstrate that death. Your life must demonstrate it. There are two standards that demonstrate that Jesus is Lord over our lives. Write it down quickly. Number one is surrender. Your degree of surrender. If Jesus is Lord of your life, let me see it by how much of surrender, how much you are willing to decrease that he will increase. Not how much you are willing to pray in tongues. Not how much you are willing to preach. No, not how much you are willing to climb scriptures. Surrender. This is where many believers in the church are shortchanged and greatly cheated. The difficulty to surrender everything. King of my life, you are my all, and I live for you alone. You're the king of my life, you have my all. And I lay my life. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down. The degree to which you have surrendered your finances, the degree to which you have surrendered your emotions. Look up, please. You can be born again. You have given God your heart, but you have not given God your money. He's not Lord of your life. You have given God your, your heart, but you have not given God your intellect. You see, the area Satan attacks in your life is the area that the Lordship of Jesus has not yet covered. That becomes his place, his point of attack in a man's life. When Satan comes into your life, he can't just attack you anyhow. He keeps searching. He does it by trial and error. So he looks at your giving life. He looks at your obedience and he knows that Jesus is not yet Lord here. He looks at your ego and he knows that you can give every other thing but your reputation. And then his attack comes from the dimension of your reputation. Jesus is truly Lord in your life when you are completely surrendered. Everything. It it is a theme in this ministry. How that you must surrender everything to God. It's called death. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ, the Bible says. Nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I, but the life that I now live in the flesh, that is the body. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Right? Who loved me and gave himself for me. It's a realm called Galatians 2.20. Brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whatever, hold on, let me press a point. Whatever in your life you cannot give God, is the idol in your life and that's what satan will use to kill you there are many people is relationships and association you can give god everything but friends are we together yeah 
everything but friends everything but your education oh i'm brilliant you know i have a master's in this i have a phd in this and that and that i'm an intellectual i mean i'm i'm, I'm this and that and that I, I have 12 masters and i mean you have to respect that and the devil says that's right he will use it and destroy your life everything you don't hand over to god cannot be trusted to bless you whatever it is in the kingdom things only bless us to the degree we've handed them over to god so the test of lordship was best demonstrated in the life of the patriarch abraham genesis chapter 22 verse 1 the bible says how that god tested abraham and he says abraham take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest right and he says and it came to pass after these things that god did test or tempt abraham god was trying to get to bless abraham but he knew that abraham must be tested that lordship test take thy only son isaac whom thou lovest and get thee to the land of moriah and offer him for a bond offering abraham come promise abraham wakes up in the morning to a prophetic instruction after waiting for over 25 years to have a child please pay attention and then the lord tells him carry this child don't discuss with your wife go and kill him and then the bible says abraham arose early everybody say obedience unto death say it obedience unto death and he held his son do you know what that means gathered the servants and said look we have to go and offer sacrifices unto god and abraham was thinking in his heart my future the son of every man represents his future the one who continues the name and he says abraham destroy your future can you give up your future to prove that you love me <laughs> abraham said this is hard but i will do it you see every time i teach about surrender it does me something because it's something that has happened in my own life it's a circumcision that only when you have given up everything master we have left all to follow you left all to follow you and he took abraham he took Isaac. When he got to the base of the mountain, he knew that the servants would think he has run mad and would stop him. And he said, you people should wait. He started climbing the mountain with his own son. Only son. His future. The son of promise. Waited more than 25 years. And the son Isaac started getting concerned. And he said, Father, I see the wood. I see the fire. Of course, he saw the knife too. Where is the sacrifice? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. In his heart, he was saying, son, before your arrival, there was one whom I loved and not even my love for you can compete. My God. That is the realm of men and women who will walk in power. Who can give God anything, including their lives. He tied Isaac. You can imagine Isaac begging his father and saying, Father, please, if I offended you, forgive me. And he said, no, no, it's not about offense. It's about the Lordship. And God was seeing a foreshadow of what only him could do. Do you know people could not give their children easily like that? God was about to give his only son. And here he was seeing a mortal man. And Abraham carried Isaac and dropped Isaac. The angels were wondering, asking questions. And said, I hope this guy is correct. His future is about to be jeopardized. He lifted the knife. Romans chapter 4. The Bible says that Abraham already planned, paraphrasing, that when he killed Isaac, he would beg God to bring Isaac back to life. In other words, God, I've obeyed you. Now my son is dead. Please bring him back to life. And when he lifted up the knife, God said, stop, Abraham, for now, I know. Not when you left your house. Now, now, I know that thou fearest me, seeing that you did not withhold your son from me. Here comes a blessing. Now, I swear by my name, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, listen, 
Many people claim the blessings of Abraham. The Jews wanted to do that. And they said, we are the sons of Abraham. And he said, if you are the sons of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. The works of, of Abraham is loyalty and obedience unto death. That's how you get the blessings of Abraham. It's not by chanting and quoting. <clears throat> you are not qualified when you cannot submit and surrender everything. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if it is God you are working with, he will demand everything from you. Everything. Just listen to what I'm telling you. He will demand everything. Everything means he must probe it until it comes under his lordship. Just when you love this brother, you cannot sleep because of him. Then God comes to you in the night and says, my daughter, you have been saying you love me so much. But I'm asking you a question. Can you leave this guy? He didn't say leave him. It's just a question. And he said, no, this has to be a demon. I'm 32. I need to marry by March. What kind of lack of breakthrough is this? Apostle prophesied miracle service that I must marry. And now one spirit. And you reject and cast. When you finish, God says, are you done? Answer my question. The still small voice. Can you leave the brother? And just when you are about to think his call comes and he sends a text, thank God for the gift of you in my life. I say, God, I reject this. I, I reject this. Don't play with my heart. And God says, That's the idol in your heart. If you cannot lay him aside, you finish with your salary and you are happy. You want to go and buy trousers and shirt. And God says, Carry all that money. Join it to whatever else you have in your account. And just when they sent you money from abroad and says, carry it and go and say, say God, Abba, you are joking. Even you, you know I would do it. There's no point asking me. You already know I would not obey you because it can't be you. You are a good God. You don't punish people like that. You see how we use scriptures? And then God looks at you. Whereas his plan was that by that act of obedience he will bless you. Do you know there are times God has told me please I'm not saying you should bring money to me after the service. That's not what I'm saying. Get me correct so you don't think I'm using someone to manipulate you. You know I'm blessed. Listen. Do you know that there are times God has spoken to me that he was going to test certain people and he would give them instructions to empty their accounts for instance and carry the money and come and give me. Now, God did not tell me their faces, but God told me that when they come, I should not collect it. I should only bless it and give them back. And you see the people dragging themselves. They stand like prisoners who just came out. I mean, they, they can't believe it. They are surprised that they are obeying because they are not supposed to obey that kind of instruction. Obedience unto death. While you are laughing, I hope you get what I'm saying. The implications of the Lordship of Christ. And then they come and stand. And sometimes, it's not like I pray on the money and give them immediately. I just bless it and I said, alright, um, the Lord will honor you. And they live sad. You know something, you know that something died. God, is this you? I did this. Did they charm me? And after three days, I called them and I said, this is what the Lord has said. I should bless. No, 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 apostle. And I said, no. And within one week, their lives changed to another dimension. When you pass the Lordship test, no charm, believe me, no principality, no enchantment will survive you because you are under an authority that is committed to defending you. Hallelujah. One time, I heard, I think one of our people here was stranded somewhere and the person called me. He was a worker and he called me and he said, I'm a worker in Koinonia. I'm stranded here and there and there. And when I verified that the story was true, I said immediately, we'll try to get resources to you immediately. Why? Because the fact that that person identified as a worker and we know that the person is a faithful worker puts pressure on my integrity to defend the person. Are we together now? Yeah. Yeah. That's why God does not show up and defend many of us. Some of you will go for a meeting now and say there is a lady wearing yellow. Whether you see her or not. The power of God will touch you and everybody is watching you. I say, ah! Apostle must be carrying a charm. It's not that easy. It's lordship. 
the key is lordship that i may decrease so that he christ will increase have you laid down your isaac everybody please look at me carefully don't say yes laying down your isaac is do you know there are certain isaacs you cannot lay down you can only give god permission to carry them you don't have the strength to lay it down koinonia is quiet tonight because you suspect god will do something about this message i assure you he will don't don't even try to he will right away the god i serve there are prayers that you don't pray twice to answer let me tell you the kind of prayer god answers once lord have your way ah, music to the ears of the lord have your way that's exactly because he really will have his way but you see you must trust him to know he will not destroy you look what he made out of our lives i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is true I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is so good. You must get to a point where you can lay everything. Look at me. There are some of you, you claim Jesus is Lord, and the Lord just tells you, take one of your shoes out of the ten you have. Just take one shoe and you say, no, 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 God, you can't do this. You, he's not Lord. Brothers and sisters, you will never be blessed that way. As a man of God, there are times they will invite you somewhere and you have all kinds of honorariums waiting and then another small gathering somewhere and God will say, that's the one. The gathering where you are the one who will support them after the meeting. You will finish and say, I'm aware you guys don't have bike money. Take 1,000. And God says, that's the one you go to. Let me show you why many people never walk in power. The secret of power is the revelation of the lordship of jesus jesus submitted obeyed unto death wherefore god so highly exalted him submit your finances to the principles of god and see the wonder he will make out of your life submit your emotions to the control of jesus and see what he will do with you submit your gift and talent carry all your certificates and kneel down before him and say lord you are the reason why i have these masters i put it before you what do you want me to do with it and god says that's all somebody will stop sleeping in nmpc it does i don't care whether you read whatever god will wake somebody and say bless my child because he has now put me in control of that certificate you can carry it on your own and move around looking for job and somebody will say are you are you with masters ask you can you manage gate man you say about me because you are the one looking for it but when you surrender it surrender is powerful i don't know how to tell you this thing is something i've done oh listen this man you are seeing standing before you can give god anything ask god ask him money ah, that one is not even i don't have to be a christian to do that one years ago the Lord asked me a question and said can you give me your life and I told him no I honestly thought about it and I said I can't give him my life I can give you my heart to be persecuted I can give you my ears to hear nonsense from critics but I'm not sure I can give you my life because I was sincere and the Lord did something for me believe me like Paul for me now Joshua Selman to live is Christ to die is gain God uses a business terminology for, for death I won't die you, you try to kill me you are wasting your time you don't know how many times they've tried to kill me but now it's not for fear I need to be alive to do many serious things for the kingdom so it's not just fear oh accident ask my people what happens when we are traveling there was a time I think we were going to Lagos or so or we're, I think we are coming from Ibadan the plane was shaking as if somebody was doing high jump on it everybody you know first people start being uncomfortable everybody just greets their neighbor i hope you're okay and then later on people want to on phone and snap so that whatever happens ask them I, I sleep all through do you know the mysteries that surround my life to die yeah yeah paul died immediately the people left he resurrected himself and said let's let's continue don't mind these lousy people 
when he was done he said I'm ready to be poured out as a drink offering I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up are you blessed many people reject death out of fear not the confidence of what their submission to God has brought please koinonia don't trivialize what I'm telling you if you want to see power and triumph you want to see battles being fought for you come under the authority of the Lord Jesus and see what will happen what will it cost you hold on it will cost you only one thing your ambitions yourself your will your will is the price to pay for Jesus to be Lord your will your will self I want it my way it must be my way I want to live in Abuja by myself God says go to Zamfara he says I cast that spirit Zamfara where I'm, I, I, the Bible says a land flowing with milk and honey and you go to Abuja and live like an arm robber there hopping from place to place because the hand of God is not there are we together yeah to sacrifice your will is one of the hardest things for a believer to do. Thy will be done in my life. Thy will be done in my life. Lord, thy will be done in my life. This is how Christians walk. We come to God with our desires and then we arrange scriptures that will force him to have to give us our desires and we are afraid of telling him nevertheless. Lord, this is my desire but what is your opinion? We don't want it. When you can say nevertheless, Jesus is Lord of your life. Lord, I want to buy this house but nevertheless, I've died to my will. Koinonia, please hear me. I bring you to a place of power tonight when everything about your life revolves around the purposes of the kingdom where he becomes Lord over your life. Are we together? Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So when you have your ambitions, this is how I want my life to be. This is how I want my ways to be. And God says, whatever it is, this is my plan for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you, you, a future. You have trusted people who don't have guarantee over your life. Why not hand everything over to him? Take now thy only son, whom thou lovest, and offer him as a burnt offering. Your journey to power is a dream until you can sacrifice all to him. Not sacrifice some. Not sacrifice the most important ones. Everything. That you get to a point today where if God says empty your, your bank account, yes sir. You get to a point where God says sow your car or your house, yes sir. Many carnal people will insult you and call you stupid. Where God sits down and God says look promise. I want you to get up now and go to Togo. Your life from March starts in Togo. Go and stay there. For as long as it is him, when you have lost the ability to tell God, no, he is Lord of your life. That's when you will see the power of God. That's when you will speak and have him back you. Not just because somebody laid hands on you. You know, you've heard me say it in Koinonia many times. Hold on that so many people i'm sure some of you are waiting now after service to see me and as soon as you see me you want to hold my shoe it's not there the power is not in the shoe you can carry it and go with it it's not in the shoe the power is not even in my hands coming on you the power is in a posture in the realm of the spirit a posture of complete surrender the day i stop that i will never see that power in my life again are we together Jesus, be Lord of my life. Don't just say, I, I, Lord, I know you too. You know you are Lord. He said, don't, I don't know. If you say, I am Lord, I am watching. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And will not do, do, obedience, obedience, obedience. 
This is where greed comes from. This is where selfishness comes from. This is why many people are poor. It's not because they are not business people. It's not because this and that, all kinds of things. You know, people read all kinds of business books. Listen, let me tell you something. You know that Koinonia is full of entrepreneurs here and there. There are millionaires in this place. Silent millionaires just sitting looking around. There are very blessed people in this place. But I can tell you this. Much more than business acumen or whatever it is. If God cannot get your heart, you are a joker as far as impact in the kingdom is concerned. So if God has declared for us as a family of faith that this is our year of triumph, then we must get to a point in our lives where all, everybody say all. Say it, say all. All. You have surrendered your will to the extent that if God looks at you and says no marriage, you say, Kai, God, this is painful, oh, but your will be done. I just said married someone. I mean, I felt the shock. It just entered some of us. I, 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 I rebuked that one. That apostle, you are going too far. Just, Abba. Lord, you have everything in this ministry. There is no instruction you will give us that we will not do. You ask the leaders. There is nothing God says to be done that will not be done. If God says empty all the ministry account savings reserves anything, Monday morning it's me that will supervise it. It will go. You can publish it in the newspaper and say, look, stupid men of God are here again. No problem. Let the stupidity yield results. We are too carnal. That's why we don't see the power of God. There's too much carnality. Sensually driven. Driven by intellect. Oh, you know, if you add A plus B, we are intelligent being C plus. No, 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 no. When you come to the kingdom, the word of God is your modus operandi. You have to live by it. Find out what happened to the lives of people who obeyed God in scripture. Mad instructions, but they obeyed. And God vindicated them and blessed them. Koinonia, please hear me. You must rise to a point in the name of Jesus Christ where nothing becomes too much for you to give him. I'm showing you where the devil is destroying you. Do you know why many people are poor? Because they have not handed the affairs of their finances to God. Believe me, recession is biting people, lashing out on people. And the simple reason is they have not handed over their finances to God. You believe your survival comes through your job, so it will punish you. You believe your survival comes through your uncle. So the day you try to call your uncle and he does not pick, he said, no, nothing will kill my uncle. He has to remain alive to take care of me. You are trusting in man. Woe unto any man who puts his strength in a man. You believe what I'm telling you? This is how the Lord trained me. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord said to me. It's a promise. And he's kept it. He's kept it. Everything God gives me is not a problem for him because he knows that it belongs to him. Can God give you something and take it back? You know, it's like our little ones here. You can give them something now. They will collect and you say, give me back and they will refuse. That's how many of us are. Oh God, give me divine health. And then he says, alright, can you use it for my house? I say, no, oh God. Now that I'm, I'm in... Uh, Esther used her beauty for the glory. When he became Lord over her beauty, she became queen. Everything Jesus becomes Lord over prospers. Whatever he's not Lord over suffers. It's a law. Everything Jesus is allowed to become Lord over prospers. To be Lord is not just to declare and say Lord. Uh -uh. To be Lord means you are willing to abide by his terms over that affairs. So over your finances, when you say Jesus is Lord, what you are saying is, as far as kingdom finance is concerned, I am ready to live by all the principles. So you tithe in a delight some way. When you carry your tithe to the house of God, you don't frown as if you are going to bribe God. Jesus, I thank you for the privilege of bringing a tenth. When you are sowing a seed, when you are giving, you are knowing that I'm opening the floodgates of heaven. And Lord, I thank you. Not that you are saying, God, this money I'm giving, if no return comes, uh-uh. He is Lord. Whether he blesses me or not, believe me, 
I cannot accuse him. What will be the accusation? What will be the accusation? That God is not faithful? If I die of sickness today, the last word that will come out of my mouth is, Lord, you are the healer. And then I'll rest. Society, listen, is full of people with high blood pressure. Do you know what causes high blood pressure? Ask the doctors, they will tell you. Because you are in charge of your own world. And there is pressure to make it work. I have to pay the school fees of my child. What will people say if I cannot pay it? And so you go around putting yourself in trouble. No, no, I am, I am 40 years at my age. I should have a car. So I have to get a car. I have to hustle around. And so you are trying. And somebody will dupe you. And you come back and almost high blood pressure. No, no, no. People cannot say I'm buried. I've been married for five years. Small, small boys and girls are now giving birth. Me, that I'm like their mother, I will do anything. And you go and meet a herbalist and you land in trouble. You see how the lack of surrender to God is the reason for stress. I've preached this again and again and I will repeat it. Brothers and sisters, there is a place in Christ where men can be free. I bring you to the place of freedom where you hand over everything about your life and rest. You are carrying a load that is too much for you. This year, I must build a house whether the devil likes it or not. A good plan. But you are now trying to do it by the strength of the flesh. You now go and borrow money from the bank. As soon as you borrow money from the bank, they now steal it. You are in trouble. No house, no money. High blood pressure starts. And then the devil says, okay, let me do. Go and borrow another one. You get into trouble. By August, you are almost dying. You can't get up in the morning and breathe well. You see someone of 27 looking like, like 59. You ask him what is happening in Nigeria. No, it's not Nigeria. It is your understanding. Because there are still happy people in this country. Is God speaking to us? There are many students under pressure. I must get a job by myself. I must work service. I'm, no, 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 no. See, I want you to be, look, trust God's responsibility over your life. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. If God does not give you a wife, you can't marry. Well, you can marry, but what you will be responsible for whoever and whatever you marry. If except the Lord builds if God does not give you a job you can lobby your way and get a job that will punish you your joy leaves from the day you get that job it's only God that can give you a ministry you can organize people who will steal from you, criticize you they are the ones who will pay people in the newspaper to say let's confess one day we went to the back of one fence and he rubbed one oil on my face the same people I trust in him. I've handed my entire life to him. Such a realm of freedom. You put pressure on his integrity through your obedience. Lord, I obey you. If nothing happens, I said it in one of the meetings in Koinonia, never claim to be giving God the glory when you are the one taking the shame. Never claim to be giving God the glory when you are the one taking the shame. We live in a society where we are so shame conscious. Ah, look at the shame they have brought to me. That's why you will suffer for nothing. Shame, that word is a, is a word that you hear being used everywhere. Let them not say I'm not rich. Ah, sh I don't want shame. So you go and borrow money and buy bottles of minerals. And then from there the person says, look, the next day I won't talk to you again. I'm coming to come and carry my bottles in the presence of your visitors. Leave everything to God. Tonight we are going to do a handover ceremony. Not from one power to the other. Hand over of your life and destiny and say, Lord, this load is killing me. I can't sleep. God designed sleep. There are many of us here, we've not slept for days. It's not just demon spirit. Stress. Stress. You see a pastor of 100 members not sleeping. You ask him where he said, where will we get generator by Sunday? Mr. Man, you didn't call yourself. Calm down. Five minutes in the presence of God. God will get up and speak to someone. You want to borrow gen, God will bl bl instruct somebody to buy it and give you.
These are my contemplations. Please, I don't want you to take what I'm saying lightly. The secret to the power of God upon my life, aside from my love for him, is my total surrender of my will and everything in my life. I have pleaded with God, crying in the secret place, that whatever is in my life that I cannot give God, I've begged him to never give me. It is the favor I have pleaded with God to do for me. That Lord, if there is anything in my life that I will not be able to hand over to you, may it never come. That's the way of saving me. Finances, ministry, prestige, anointing, titles, reputation, influence. What is it that you cannot give God? It's the reason why the devil will destroy you. Brothers, you will hand over everything. There are many gentlemen now. There are predominantly young people here. And many brothers are out to take this year of triumph and make sure they are established. They want to force this door to open. No, you use keys. You don't use force. No, I must start ending. I'm not a small boy again. I'm, I'll be hearing this message. I must put it to work. You're about to put yourself in big trouble. I hand over my life to you. Jesus, if you don't help me, no one can help me. I will obey you and declare your lordship by allowing the word of God to dominate in me. If you have said that tithing brings favor, I will tithe and nothing will stop me. If praising you is the secret to breakthrough, I will praise you like a madman. That's his lordship over the life. Everything you believe the word of God can give you, have you applied it? Jesus is not Lord. I told you the, the, the dominion of the word in your life and the freedom with which you give the principles of the kingdom to find expression in you is the measure of the lordship of Christ in your life. I've come tonight to bring a very, very simple but profound secret to you. Koinonia, make Jesus Lord of your life experientially, not by talk. Hand over your house to him and see whether you will beg for food. Hand over your children to him and see whether he cannot pay their school fees. Hand over your education and see whether they will drive you out of the university because there's no school fees. He says, come on to me, all ye that labor. Hand over your intention to build a house to him and watch somebody build a house and bring the, the, the key and give it to you. You have been trying to buy a car of 1.5 million. It's almost killing you. You raise 700,000, the devourer eats it. You raise 500,000, the devourer eats it. Why not go to God and say, Lord, there is a way this thing is done. I come to you. I come to you. Help me. And the Lord will tell you A, B, C, D. And you want a car of 1 million, God will give you a car of 10 million. And people will look at you and say, you are a thief. No, you are not a thief. He is Lord of my life. When he's Lord of your life, he takes care of you. By God's grace, I have a few people that I take care of, like my children, and I am ever faithful to their lives. Their school fees, their well-being, it is my responsibility as a father figure over their life to take care of them. And I make sure, whether they deserve it or not, I give them. Not necessarily just because I love them alone. It's a show of responsibility. So when you hand over everything to God, he will pay your bills. You hand over everything to God, he will put laughter in your face. You hand over everything from, to God, he will shield you from recession. There are people already, this February, they have received rewards that even if they got by December, they will be happy. Already, because they handed everything over to God. I've handed Koinonia and I do that to him all the time. When I'm preparing for every service, I say, Lord Jesus, I am before you. I'm a small child before you. There are people listening, thousands of people waiting to be blessed all over the world. And Lord, I'm asking that you only use me. Speak through me. And I carry that sincere heart and come before him. And the results are remarkable. Results that not even me myself can account for. This is the key to ease in life. Surrender all. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, I'm withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I'm withholding nothing, 
sing it i surrender all i surrender all hand over the ministry and rest hand over the business and rest hand over the children's school fees hand over your business and rest we hold One more time to him. Hand over the relationship and rest. Hand over the marriage and rest. Hand over the projects and rest. Hand over your desire for the anointing. Rest. 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 Will you give your life away? That's what he's asking you tonight, Koinonia. Will you give your life away? So he... It's your turn to respond to him now. Lord, I give myself away. Self away. But apostle, you don't understand. If I don't pay the rent by tomorrow, they are going to drive me. If God wakes that landlord from sleep, that's only when he can come to you. The landlord will sleep for eight hours. What guarantee does he have that he will wake up? Brothers and sisters, listen. I want you to trust God. Oh, carnality has killed unbelief from believers I trust him though he slay me yet will I trust him whatever God cannot give me cannot be given by any man no matter who deceives you some may trust in horses some may trust in chariots he said but we will trust in the name of our God hallelujah get to a point of reckless abandon you hand over everything and say Lord I'm tired of sleepless nights you are not the first God has called into ministry Lord what if people don't come for this program my reputation is at stake uh -uh, uh -uh. you are the one who called yourself Lord what if I don't make it people would think I'm not successful yourself your flesh your ego is the very reason you will never step into it I show you the mystery of ease. Submission to the Lordship of Christ. Jesus submitted himself. Philippians 2.5 Obedient unto death. When there is nothing else to withhold from him, then he will give you everything. Everything. Kai. Everything. Everything. This God can surprise men. Have you not read it in your Bible? Listen. Listen. You know, I have watched, and, and let me say this with all humility, I have watched the way God is raising mighty people in this ministry, especially in the area of finances. In the last three or four months, I have been shocked at how many millionaires God has produced in this ministry. Raising, I'm talking of ordinary people, not just people who have any necessary acumen, because he found men who can say, Lord, everything that you have, everything I have, belongs to you. Trust me. Let me be your treasurer. The last treasurer betrayed you. Let me be another one. Trust me. And God says, you are doing this for me? There are people entering unbelievable dimensions of the anointing. You know why? Because they have said, Lord, bless me. It's not about myself. It's for your glory. Bless me. I surrender my crowns. Men may clap for me, but I consciously take those crowns and drop them. Every time, especially after the miracle service, no matter how late, when I go home, after everyone has gone and left me alone, I never lie down and sleep. I have my little chair that is like my altar. I just kneel down and I say, I kneel to the doer of these wonders. People are in their houses discussing me and say, my God, what a great man. And I kneel down. Sometimes people pile all kinds of seeds. There are all kinds of envelopes. And I just drop all of them on the ground. I said, Lord, this belongs to you. They gave the wrong person. But please make it right. Because I hand it over to you. It belongs to you. And God says, you do this for me. Ready for the next level. 
Some of us have stayed in one level of the anointing forever. You are anointed, but there is no growth because that is the level God has seen that he will be glorified. When it takes you to another level, you become Lord of yourself. We are going to pray. I told you it's a handover service tonight. Lay down your burdens. It's killing you. Lay down your burdens. It's killing you. What you are praying for, somebody got it today as a testimony. Why not you? Please listen to what I'm telling you. And you will watch God bless you. It's the antidote to recession. You will get up and move around. You are sleeping. God will wake somebody else and say, have you considered my servant promise? I want you not just to bless him one time, but so, so, so amount from your salary goes to him for as long as I bless you. And he's minding himself. This is the mystery some of us walk in. That people just look at our lives and say, how are these people doing it? It's the mystery of death to allow him be Lord. How many of us are willing to say, Lord, you have your way in my life? Rise up on your feet. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, oh Lord. Have your way, Lord, over my finances, over my relationships, over the ministry you have given. Over your education, over your children, over your marriage, over Kaduna State, over Nigeria. Have your way. Oh Lord. Have your way. Listen to me. The Bible says, Come on to me, all ye. Who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest look up we're going to pray some prayers but so as to conserve time I'm going to make an altar call while we pray there are people here who are not even talking about lordship like surrender of everything you need to make a genuine decision for Jesus inside outside you're listening to me online you have never truly said look I'm, I'm tired of managing my life I hand it over to Jesus there are others peradventure at a point in your life you have handed over certain aspects of your life but right now you are saying Lord I'm tired of one leg in one leg out I am determined to give you everything as we begin to pray for every other person those sets of people inside and outside clear the way for them Please, I want you to rush and make your way to the front right here. I want to pray with you. Make sure you don't sit back because God is talking to you. The remaining people, lift your voice and begin to thank God. Everyone, lift your voice and begin to thank God. Those coming for the altar call, make your way quickly. Don't think about it. He's calling you. I show you the key to safety like the act of Noah. Lord, I am tired. Tonight, I'm ready to let go everything. Make your way to the front. Every other person, lift your voice and pray. Please, as you come and stand here, be praying too. Oh Lord, have your way. Sing it one more time. Have your way, Lord. It pays to 
to receive Jesus. It pays to be serious with Jesus. It's not about being a Christian. It pays. Jesus said this, I am the way, not a way. I am the truth. Any other thing is a lie. You will see it with time. He says, and I am life. Brothers and sisters, listen. There are some of you standing here. This will be your first time. You have had preachers make altar calls. After altar calls. Some of you have even responded to other altar calls. But you've not been genuinely serious. And today you are saying, no, no, no. I can't play games again. There are others at one point in your life. You came out for an altar call. But you know your life has gone haywire. The Holy Spirit is still telling me there are still a few more people that are supposed to come and join these people in front. And he's speaking to them and they are sitting back. A handover ceremony to say, Lord, I'm tired. I can't keep pretending. Those of you in front, I want to lead you to make a serious decision for Jesus. Whether you are making it the first time or whatever it is, please make it genuine. Some of you are crying. It doesn't matter. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe that you are the Son of God. This night, I hand over my life, everything about it, unto you. I declare that you are my savior and I make you my Lord, the owner of my life, the master of my life, the leader of my life. Help me, help that lady under the anointing. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I am a child of God. I declare that I'm tired of suffering. I hand over my life to you from today forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted father these ones have publicly come out they are not playing games with you they mean business with you and they are handing over their entire lives and destinies to you Lord I present these destinies before you you who is the master manager of any man's life. I pray that you bring beauty and glory out of their lives. I pray in the name of Jesus that beauty will be replaced for ashes in their lives. In the name of Jesus. I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that you are empowered to reign. You are empowered to experience the reality of the life of God. From today, no going backwards. You move forward ever. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. Please, I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. You're going to have a few people right now. Praise the Lord. And just obey what they tell you to do. And they're going to have your details. We're going to get to you and follow you up more warmly. Please just follow them. Follow them. God bless you. Follow them. Everyone, we're going to pray. Please, we don't have time while they are going. Everyone, say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that wants to make me the Lord of my own life, the controller of my own life, the master over my life, I challenge you now in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The spirit of pride, the spirit of fear, make sure you are praying self-centeredness an egocentric personality that makes you ashamed of handing it over to Jesus Lord I lay down my pride tonight 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 I lay down, lay down my pride tonight Tired of mismanaging my life. Are you praying? Shake it up, kata la 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 la. Reketa kata prata la 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 la
Hallelujah. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, I hand over every pain, every disappointment, every burden, every concern that I've been unable to manage. I hand it over to you. Please help me do something about it. Lift your voice and pray. Oh yes. Call on to me and I will answer. Call on to me and I will answer. And I will show you. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The maker of heaven. The maker of heaven and earth. Pray, Koinonia. after me in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be a word compliant Christian I receive grace for obedience total obedience total obedience I declare the dominion of the word of God over my decisions I declare the dominion of the word of God over my life, over my destiny. Open your mouth and receive that grace. No argument with the word of God. Final authority. Unquestionable authority. Final authority. Unquestionable authority. Hallelujah. While standing, let me just tell you two benefits of the revelation of the Lordship of Christ. Number one, confidence. Confidence. When Jesus is Lord over your life, the same confidence a Jimmy's daughter has leaning on her father is the same confidence. Whenever you see any confident man in the kingdom, he has given all. That's why he's not afraid. Many terrorists can blow themselves because they know the worst that can happen. And they have said, let the worst go places. What do you do with a man who is not afraid of dying? The last enemy to be destroyed. That man has conquered it. There's nothing you can do with him. Are we together? Confidence. This fear, this timidity can be solved when Jesus becomes Lord. Oh, I know my destiny is great. Not just because you have gone there. The Lord when archangel michael came and they were fighting over the body of moses in the book of jude archangel michael looked at um, 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 lucifer and he said he would not charge a railing accusation but he said the lord rebuke you i invoke the authority that is higher than me to rebuke The Lord rebuke you. Confidence. You can turn and tell every mountain standing before you, the Lord rebuke you. You see? And then you have that confidence. Number two, 
it is the basis for true Bible faith. The Lordship of Jesus. The basis for true Bible faith. Taking action based on your conviction. The Lord said it. He said, go and tell them to lose the coat. And if they ask you, tell them the Lord, the master has need of it. The owner who created it. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. When Paul had an encounter, Saul, in the way of Damascus, he said, Lord, acknowledge his authority. There are some of you, when this becomes a revelation, brothers and sisters, you will see miracles upon miracles in your life. You will look and wonder and say, I did not feel anything. What happened? You subscribe to a revelation that produces wonders in your life. You lift up your voice to pray and God takes someone's prayer request and gives it to you as a gift. Before you lift your voice, it's like God owes you his presence. Because you have gotten to a point where everything belongs to him. Kill greed from your life in the name of Jesus. Kill self-centeredness from your life. Kill this pressure of trying to protect your reputation. No, that's the way to death. Jesus, I have declared your word to your people. I pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit of God will cause this word to truly minister in our hearts that years after today we will be able to look back and say I handed everything over to him and that's the secret to my joy and peace may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus and because you have done that I prophesy over every challenge let me speak to the mountains over your life for one minute I decree and declare that now that you have consciously handed everything over to God I prophesy to every mountain that stands before you in the name of the Lord whom you have made captain over your life I command that mountain to become a level playing ground any kind of mountain regardless Lord let impossible situations be solved right now in the name of Jesus there are people oh God who need a miracle before tomorrow morning I command that that miracle be established right now in the name